Buongiorno a tutti e buon pomeriggio, eh, benvenuti al primo workshop bilaterale sulle scienze del mare. E, visto che il programma è molto denso, eh, lascio subito la parola a Sua Eccellenza, l'ambasciatore d'Italia a Pechino, a, presso l'ambasciatore eh, la, <ride> d'Italia presso la Repubblica Popolare Cinese. Una, purtroppo abbiamo dei problemi tecnici sulla traduzione simultanea, per cui vi prego di andare di interrompervi eh, dopo un certo periodo di tempo non troppo lungo e andiamo in traduzione consecutiva. Uh,大家好 uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I was uh, originally my speech was going to be uh, in uh, in uh, Italian, but due, due to the translation problems, I'm going to improvise in English. So you will forgive me. So I'm Luca Ferrari. I'm the Italian ambassador in the People's Republic of China, and it is really a pleasure for me to be here at the to open the first bilateral workshop dedicated to scientific and technological research and high formation uh, applied to sea, to sea science. I would like, first of all, to say hello to Professor Stefano Limprota, La Porta, sorry, Stefano La Porta, president of ISPRA, the uh, um, Institute for the Protection and Environmental Research of Italy, to Professor Paola, Paolo Maria Mancarella, uh, the rector of the University of Pisa, to Professor Xiao Yunyang, secretary of the party of the Zhejiang Ocean University, and finally to Professor Antonio Terlizzi of the zoological station Anton Dorn. Uh, today's event uh, has the objective to reinforce scientific cooperation between Italy and China and to promote high formation through the creation of networks between universities and research centers, but also to deepen the sea science, the greatest sea is the greatest ecosystem of our planet. It is an indispensable element of this ecosystem and for the development of life. Um, as underlined by the United Nations 2030 agenda, we have to protect this uh, um, the sea, this, um, uh, this, this, this patrimony that we have, which we cannot change, uh, and without which no development is foreseeable. Um, the joint task of researchers, of Italian and Chinese researchers, in this field uh, represents a fundamental example of how only together we can face the greatest uh, challenges of our times, in particular the ones pertaining to climate change. Um, the, uh, the participation of ISPRA and of the Sino-Italian School of Marine Sciences of the University of Pisa, which by the way is the only bilateral Italian-Chinese school that is of formation that is authorized by the Chinese Ministry of Education. Well, this collaboration represents the very high level that scientific and bilateral cooperation between Italy and China have reached. And I'm actually, being the ambassador of Italy to China, I'm very, very proud of that. It is a collaboration that notwithstanding the pandemic has grown in these last years, and that uh, uh, we, we hope uh, will that we'll be able to further uh, grow and enhance. And especially what we do hope is that we will have uh, a stronger mobility of researchers from both sides. As you know, mobility is dramatically hampered by the pandemic. Um, the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Italian Embassy, my embassy, together with uh, 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 
Professoressa Guidi, we are intent in promoting uh, further internationalization uh, uh, of scientific research and high formation through different, with different means, through different means. First of all, the China-Italy Science, Technology and Innovation Week. This is a, an event that takes place once a year. Uh, it has had already 12 meetings. We're going for the 13th. It's a very intense corporate, scientific cooperation activity, uh, science and technology, and it aims it to, to, to uh, give, uh, um, to, it, to uh, broaden the bilateral uh, national research systems uh, uh, and to enhance academic and scientific exchanges between our two countries. Basically, it is the moment once a year when the ministers of the two sides gather to say where scientific collaboration is, where it stands and where it will go. So it's a very important moment and, and it lasts quite some time. Uh, other means to promote scientific co bilateral scientific uh, cooperation are the two executive programs, one between the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Chinese Ministry of Science and Technology, and the second one, always between the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Natural Science Foundation of China. Now, these two programs are co-financed. Uh, they um, pave the way for uh, uh, joint research programs. Um, there has been a tender uh, uh, that has just been concluded for uh, the uh, presentation of uh, joint research programs for the three years 22 to 25 and we have received over nearly well over 190 uh, projects uh, to be exact 196 and this is a testimony of the great and strong interest that these two sectors uh, uh, have on both sides. Finally, last but not least, um, we have uh, um, mobility uh, programs for our students and our researchers on both sides, and these are very important as well. Of course, these programs are, 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 have, have received a setback from the pandemic, but we do hope to, to re, uh, reorganize them and move on. Um, I want to underline that between Italian universities and Chinese universities, there are more than 1,000 agreements. Now, this, I think, testifies quite clearly to the level of uh, scientific exchanges between the two countries okay, of uh, technology uh, uh, research. Bilaterale Italia China sulla laurea, il double degree in biologia marina. Per favore, spengete i microfoni. Um, sorry, <laughs> uh, I didn't want to interrupt anybody. I'm just saying we, there are more than 1,000 research projects between Italian and Chinese universities. I think this exemplifies and testifies quite well the level of scientific and university collaboration between our two countries. In this, uh, from, in this view, I just would like to wish all of you uh, good work for today's um, uh, seminar. And um, I sincerely support a greater scientific collaboration between Italy and China. I think much has been done, but there's still a lot to be done. So thank you. Thank you for your time and your patience. La ringrazio per le sue parole. Passo adesso la parola al dottor Stefano Laporta dell'ISPRA. Presidente, e chiederei eh, se vuole procedere in italiano o in inglese. Eh, buongiorno a tutti, io mh, accorciando l'intervento procederei in italiano perché mi dicono che è stato inviato ai colleghi cinesi, Prego. quindi si aspettano sostanzialmente che io ripercorra la traccia, anche se anche io sto pensando. Ok, allora, Va benissimo. Intanto, Prego. intanto buongiorno Va. a tutti, saluto l'ambasciatore d'Italia presso la Repubblica Popolare Cinese, l'ambasciatore Ferrari. Saluto il presidente della Zhejiang Ocean University, Mr. Xiao Jun Yan, il magnifico rettore dell'Università di Pisa, professor Mancarella, il professor Terlizzi della stazione zoologica Anton Dorn, le ricercatrici, i ricercatori e tutti gli ospiti che ci stanno seguendo online.
，麦特。呃，现在呢，我来继续这个发言，因为我已经把我的发言发给了中国的同事，所以呢，我现在继续用我用意大利语来发言。首先呢，呃，我要向一些呃参会的一些嘉宾表示问候。呃，首先是尊敬的意大利驻华大使方一兰先呃，方兰逸先生，呃，尊敬的浙江海洋大学的党委书记严小军教授，比萨大学的教授保罗·玛利亚，呃，曼卡雷拉教授，还有安东多恩动物站的安东尼·特雷奇教授，还有。参加这次活动的研究人员们，大家下午好。Oggi è per me un onore ed un piacere, come presidente di ISPRA, introdurre i lavori di questo primo workshop bilaterale Italia-Cina sulla ricerca scientifica e tecnologica in alta formazione applicata alle scienze del mare. Iniziative, che iniziative come queste rappresentano un'occasione importante per rafforzare la cooperazione scientifica e tecnologica tra i due paesi. e promuovere l'alta formazione nelle scienze del mare. 那我呢是作为意大利的呃这个研究所的这个嗯意大利环境保护和研究高等研究所的所长呢，我今天非常荣幸能开启这个第一届的。海洋领域科学技术研究高级培训的这个研讨会，而且这个举措呢，为加强两国的科技合作和促进海洋科学高等教育提供了非常重要的一个机遇。所以在这样的背景下呢，呃，我们的研究所与浙江大学将签署一个新的备忘录。In questo contesto si inserisce il nuovo protocollo d'intesa tra ISPRA e la Zhejiang Ocean University. che sta per essere sottoscritto e che consentirà di consolidare le attività di cooperazione bilaterale tra i due istituti nel campo delle scienze del mare. 那刚才我也说过，因为我们两个机构有很好的之前的合作，所以今天呢要签署新的一个备忘录，而有助于巩固我们两个研究机构还有海洋在海洋科学领域的双边合作的活动。È una lunga e solida collaborazione e già in occasione della stipula del precedente accordo quattro anni fa, in qualità già di presidente dell'istituto, auspicai una lunga collaborazione tra le parti e incoraggiai l'individuazione di ulteriori tematiche di iniziative su cui lavorare insieme. No, ho detto l'Italia da. 呃，环境保护研究高等研究院呢，和浙江海洋大学已经之前有了很长一段时间的合作。实际上，我们在二零一八年疫情之前就已经签订了协议。那当时我也是这个研究院的院长，当时我就祝愿双方能够长期合作，而且祝鼓励大家提出进一步合作的主题和举措。In questi anni di cooperazione è maturata la consapevolezza di come nuove tematiche nel campo della scienza marina, penso. all'ecotossico genomica e alla valutazione degli impatti antropici sull'ecosistema marino siano importanti ed è per questo che abbiamo individuato nuove aree di studio anche in aggiunta alle tematiche di comune interesse nell'ambito del nuovo accordo che andiamo a stipulare. 那在过去几年的合作中呢，我们都逐渐意识到海洋科学领域新问题的重要性，比如说生态毒理学，还有人为对海洋生态系统影响的这个评估等等。所以呢，就确定了新协议的这个研究的领域，然后里边也包括一些呃战略和新的问题，同样都会成为这次富有成果的研究会的一些讨论的主题。Si tratta di nuove aree di lavoro quali lo sviluppo di, bio, di biotecnologie per la decontaminazione dell'ecosistema marino, il monitoraggio marino, acquacultura e sicurezza alimentare, biologia funzionale del plancton marino e produttività degli ecosistemi e poi il progetto Fattoria del Mare per il controllo, la tracciabilità e la qualità dei prodotti ittici. 那这些专题就包括：第一是开发用于生态系统进化的海洋生物技术；第二是海洋监呃监测；第三个是水产养殖和食品安全；第四个是海洋浮游生物的功能生物学，还有生态系统的生产力；呃，第四个是一个大海农场项目，旨在控制鱼类产品及其可追溯性。i colleghi de, dell'Università di Pisa e della stazione zoologica Anton Dorno, con i quali abbiamo già intrapreso accordi di collaborazione e che consentiranno di sviluppare un settore centrale quale la Blue Economy, uno dei grandi assi di sviluppo dell'economia prossima e futura a livello planetario. 
agendo tutti insieme in maniera sinergica e con azioni win-win. 那刚才说的这些方面呢，也是我们与比萨大学和安东多恩多呃动物站以前的一些合作协议里边共同关心的问题。那这就上涉及到了这个蓝色增长以及蓝色经济这个角度的可持续管理和增长的这个重要性。这
especially for the improvement of the ocean environment and ocean lives. Zhejiang Ocean University is a university jointly built by Ministry of Natural Resources and the People's Government of Zhejiang Province and is one of the key universities in Zhejiang Province. The university has nine provin provincial top-ranking disciplines, among which two disciplines, namely plant and, and animal science and agricultural sciences, are ranked in top 1% of the Global Essential Scientific Index. And we have two disciplines, namely marine sciences and agriculture, ranked in top 10 in all universities in China. Our university was qualified as a master degree awarding unit in 2006. And now we have 17 programs for graduate studies and 48 undergraduate majors, including five national first class undergraduate majors and 14 provincial first class undergraduate majors. The total number of students in Zhejiang Ocean University is more than 16,600, including more than 14,000 undergraduate students and 2,600 postgraduate students. PISA Marine Graduate School of Zhejiang Ocean University was approved by the Ministry of Education in China in September 2018 rely on the two exceptional disciplines of marine sciences and food science and engineering of the University of Pisa, Italy and Zhejiang Ocean University, China. The two universities jointly established to hold the final foreign cooperative education institution at the postgraduate level. Pisa Marine Graduate School has been running successfully for these three years and the collaboration between China and Italy is very fruitful. In order to further strengthen the collaboration, we plan to hire a number of professors from University of Pisa as our visiting professors, so as to strengthen the faculty of the Pisa Marine Graduate School and enhance the quality of postgraduate training and education. Based on the co good cooperation of the first two majors, our university is looking forward to further cooperation between the University of Pisa in the fields of information engineering, civil engineering, and mechanical engineering to extend the collaboration on education and scientific research to improve the ocean economy and uh, blue carbon uh, potentials. Taking Pisa Marine Graduate School as a career, Zhejiang Ocean University and the University of Pisa have not only worked together to cultivate high quality talent at the postgraduate level, but also continuously increase the collaboration in the field of scientific research. With the following representative work, the Chinese team has cooperated with the University of Pisa and the Italian Institute for Environmental Protection and Research, the ISPRA, to declare a key international cooperative collaborative research project, discovery and the mining of immunity uniqueness of marine muscle for environmental adaption through genomic research, and successfully appro appro approved this project from the National Science Foundation of China, the project funds 2.65 million yuan directly. It marked, uh, marks a new level of international research collaboration and lays a solid foundation for high level postgraduate training. Based on the good foundations of the, these collaborations, we have published five collab, co collaborative research papers in high quality uh, international journals. And we also have the first muscle international meeting uh, uh, with the both, both collaborations. We hope 
to develop more extensive international research collaborations with the Italian research teams in the field of functional biology and ecotoxicology of marine biota. The cooperation between PISA uh, marine graduate schools from both partners have attracted widespread attention from the society and the local government. In China, has shown PISA marine graduate schools and give strong support to it. Rely on the role of Italian embassy in China, PISA Marine Graduate School will deepen its cooperation in with the University of PISA and ESPRA and Anton Don Zoological Station and other research and teaching units. Just in this moment, with collaborations between ESPRA and the VJOU, Professor Esapela Bottino and Professor Bao Yingguo have sent a new scientific collaboration project to both National Science Foundation. We are hoping this new proposal will be successful with the full support from the Italian embassy. And also, Ms. Jian Dongfeng, she just got the notification from the CSC that she has given the scholarship for her further study in University of Pisa. So these are some good news. Thanks again to the Italian embassy in China for the invitation. Thank, thank you, Professor Guidi, for organizing this conference. Thank you so much. This is the end of my speech. Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, intervention. Adesso procediamo con la, con la firma dell'accordo. Ovviamente una firma virtuale. Bene, stiamo vedendo. Ecco qua. Abbiamo la firma di Istra e adesso anche la firma della Zeitung Ocean University. Bene, possiamo considerare conclusa la cerimonia della firma. Bene. Adesso passo la parola al professor Paolo Mancarella, rettore dell'Università di Pisa. Buongiorno a tutti. Grazie intanto Sua Eccellenza, sua eccellenza l'ambasciatore italiano in Cina Luca Ferrari, la professoressa Alessandra Guidi, addetta scientifica presso l'Ambasciata d'Italia a Pechino, per aver coinvolto l'Università di Pisa in questo primo workshop bilaterale Italia-Cina, dedicato alla ricerca scientifica e tecnologica e all'alta formazione applicata alle scienze. Questa è un'occasione per la nostra comunità di rafforzare i già ottimi rapporti di cooperazione che da molto tempo intercorrono con la Cina. Penso in primo luogo alla convenzione con la Young Ocean University di un doppio titolo in biologia marina. Questo 
questo, questa collaborazione è partita con l'anno accademico 2015-2016 e ha favorito lo sviluppo di una fruttuosa collaborazione e cooperazione tra le nostre due università anche in altre aree scientifico-disciplinari, tanto da aver portato all'istituzione di un corso congiunto in biosicurezza e qualità degli alimenti e nel 2017 alla nascita della Pisa Marine Graduate School che come ricordava poc'anzi sua eccellenza l'ambasciatore Ferrari ancora oggi è l'unica scuola di eccellenza nata dalla collaborazione tra un'università italiana e un'università cinese specialmente trovata dal Ministero cinese dell'educazione. Nam,这个项目呢,从2015年开始,也促进了我们两所大学在其他科学学科领域内开展的卓有成效的合作,尤其是2017年建立一个关于生物安全和食品质量的联合课堂,课程,而且也诞生了比萨海洋研究生院。
深有体会。一段时间以来，我们都位于最前沿、巩固可持续性文化这一个重要的因素，使其深入到社会当中。无论是通过对公民，还是对企业的教育，甚至是将一使命这个使命纳入了学校的章程和战略计划，使其成为教学和科研活动的核心要素。Pensate che oggi il quaranta per cento dei progetti europei vinti dall'Università di Pisa sono legati ai temi della sostenibilità. Per non parlare poi di quanto cerchiamo di fare per il trasferimento e la valorizzazione delle conoscenze nel contesto di uno sviluppo sostenibile dei nostri territori. 比如说，今天比萨大学赢得的欧洲项目中有百分之四十是与可持续性问题有关的，更不用说我们在领土可持续发展的背景下，与技术转移还有知识利用所做的努力。E d'altronde, come ha giustamente detto. L'ambientalista e vincitrice del Goldman Prize 2012, Ika Langelei,、eh, per rendere reale la parola sostenibile, dobbiamo offrire alla comunità le conoscenze e gli strumenti per difendere se stesse. Ecco, mi piace concludere pensando che se oggi siamo qui è anche per questo. Vi ringrazio per l'attenzione e vi auguro un buon lavoro. 正如环保主义者和二零一二年高盛奖得主伊卡尔呃安杰雷所说的那样，要想可持将这个可持续这个词成为现实，那么我们必须为社会提供保护自己的知识和工具。那我们今天参加这个研讨会，我认为正是出于这个原因。最后感谢大家，祝大家工作顺利。Grazie Paolo, grazie professor Mancarella, rettore dell'Università di Pisa. Passo adesso la parola al professor Antonio Terlizzi. Eh, 那我们感谢比萨大学校长保罗·玛利亚·曼克雷拉教授的发言。上下边呢，我们就呃有请安东尼奥·特雷奇教授来发言。他是安东多雷工作站的负责人。Buongiorno a tutti. Anche a nome del presidente della sezione zoologica Roberto da Novaro. Io vi ringrazio di aver invi- avermi invitato a presiedere e, me- e col- colgo l'occasione per salutare Sua Eccellenza l'Ambasciatore Ferrari, il Presidente dell'Ispra, il Dottor Stefano Laporta, il Professor Gianni e il magnifico Dottore dell'Università di Pisa, il Professor Mancarelli. 嗯，呃，那呃，非常感谢对我的邀请呢。我是在这个安东呃安诺多安工作动物站工作的，我呢是呃代表了罗贝托达诺瓦罗教授呃他的这个对大家的问候。那我借此机会呢，也问候今天参加活动的主要的嘉宾，呃，意大利驻中国大使方兰毅先生，呃，还有呃意大利环境保护与研究高等研究院的斯特法诺呃拉波尔塔呃博士，还有浙江海洋。大学的呃书记严晓军教授，嗯，还有这个呃比萨大学的校长保罗·玛利亚·呃曼卡雷拉教授。La stazione zoologica, eh, forse eh, non tutti sanno, nasce è il più antico ente di ricerca in Europa. Nasce nel 1872 da un'intuizione di Anton Dorn, che è figlia di una corrispondenza fitta con Charles Darwin. 嗯，呃，那大家可能不知道啊，我们这个呃动物研究站呢，实际上是在欧洲是一九七二年的是呃欧洲最重要的最早的这么一个动物研究所。Il concetto di 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 Dorn era di fondare appunto una stazione e che vedesse come così come i treni che si fermano nella stazione i ricercatori che si fermassero qui e avessero tutto il supporto in termini di raccolta di materiale e di tavoli di studio per portare avanti le loro ricerche. 呃，那我们这个动呃动物研究站呢，它实际上是一个进行培训的这么一个机构，呃，主要是为研究人员提供所有需要的一些材料啊、工具啊、其他的呃所有方面的服务。Da allora eh, eh, di acqua ne è passata sotto i ponti. Adesso siamo un ente pubblico di ricerca, e, e, però il concetto di stazione è rimasto. Questa apertura ai ricercatori da qualsiasi di par- parte del mondo provenissero ha fatto sì che alla stazione zoologica lavorassero più di venti premi Nobel. 
嗯，呃，那这是我们之前就是呃刚刚建设时候的初衷，直到现在为止呢，我们这个动物站它原来的初衷还是没有改变的，它非常的开放，向全世界所有的研究人员开放。呃，而且呢，在我们资助之下是有将近二十个呃诺贝尔，就是科学奖的这个得主啊、呃，是呃我们为他们提供过支持。Negli ultimi anni abbiamo avuto un, un, un incremento del numero di personale reclutando tante persone e dando la possibilità a ricercatori italiani e stranieri di, di tornare in Italia e abbiamo eh, avuto un'espansione un territoriale. Adesso la sezione zoologica non è più esclusivamente a Napoli ma abbiamo sedi territoriali in diverse eh, località eh, su tutto il perimetro della penisola italiana. <音>那么，在过去的几年呢，我们也是有了非常好的发展，对呃意大利来自意大利各个地方，还有全世界各个地方的这个研究员提供了服务，而且是呢帮助很多意大利的研究员回到意大利来进行研究。那我们这个动物站呃创建的时候是大布勒斯，现在呢已经有其他很多的分站呃分站，然后遍布了意大利呃半岛的各个地方。A tutti questi ricercatori poi si associano, e noi li chiamiamo appunto ricercatori associati, tanti colleghi e ex ricercatori. Isabella Buttino, che saluto, è una di queste, è un'ex ricercatrice della stazione zoologica con la quale però eh, collaboriamo e ha collaborazioni con tanti dei miei ricercatori. 嗯，呃，那我们这个动物站呢，是和非常多的研究人员进行合作的。我们呃，把他们就是称为我们的这个合作研究员，主要是在这个生态系统。那我看到今天参会的也有呃，跟我们合作过的这个研究员，我也跟他对他呃进行问候。Quando dico miei, ovviamente includo i ricercatori che fanno parte del mio dipartimento. Cioè, io sono direttore del dipartimento di ecologia marina integrata, che è il dipartimento più grande. Poi ci sono altri quattro dipartimenti alla stazione zoologica. 嗯，呃，那我刚才说我们，因为呢，我实际上就是在这个海洋呃研究呃系里边的这个负责人，然后我们这个呃研究站呢，实际上是涉及了四个大学里的这个门呃门类这个学科。L'apertura internazionale della stazione zoologica è anche testimoniata dal fatto che noi siamo parte del MBRC, cioè European Marine Biological Research Center, che vede associato una serie di di istituzioni di ricerca europee e anche diciamo, la, la, la frequentazione della stazione zoologica di a, altre istituzioni oltre continente. 刚才我们说呢，我的这个呃，我们的这个呃，动物研究站呢是非常开放型的，是向全世界开放的。呃，因为我们是一个欧洲的呃，整个系统的一个呃，动物学或者海洋学研究站的一部分。那在我们这儿呢，呃，合作的不光是欧洲的一些研究员，也包括来自全世界的研究员。Io credo fortemente che quella di oggi sia un'occasione per rafforzare. Ulteriormente i rapporti comuni di ricerca che la stazione zoologica ha con, I, con ISPRA e con la Zhejiang Ocean University. 那我们今天参加这个活呃活动的目的呢，就是为了加强呃与意大利这个呃环境保护与研究高等研究院，还有和浙江海洋大学的合作。Il concetto chiave, come ha già accennato il professor Bancarella, è il tema della biodiversità e della sostenibilità. Abbiamo 8 miliardi al mondo con una pressione da parte della componente umana veramente senza precedenti sul pianeta. 那我们刚才呢，这几位教授也说过了，我们呃要探讨的是这个生物多样性的问题，而且在全世界呢，涉及到就是呃八十多亿的这样的一个压力。E noi dipendiamo dalla biodiversità, non fosse altro per mangiare e per respirare. Dobbiamo renderci conto che conoscere la biodiversità, rispettarla, significa, rispet significa dare un futuro alla nostra esistenza sul pianeta. Convincersi dell'importanza della biodiversità per la nostra stessa esistenza è la sfida futura nell'ambito della Blue Growth, di tutte, le, di tutte le, le attività di ricerca e la progettualità europea e internazionale. Dobbiamo convincerci che rispettando la biodiversità e conoscendola garantiamo il nostro futuro sul pianeta. 
。那我们要考虑到，刚才我们说的生物多样性呢，并不是一个依赖，哎，我们一定要尊重它，尤其要考虑到，不只是说我们现在生存的这个吃喝的问题，而且要考虑到我们未来这个发展，在欧洲，呃，或者欧洲以内以外的这个研究，尤其是我们人类生存。呃，对它对人类生存提供一个保障，这个是我们尊重生物多样性的最主要的原因。Non vi rubo ancora altro tempo nel ringraziarvi ancora per avermi invitato a, a, nell'Institutional Remark. Vi porto ancora i saluti del professor Danovaro. Vi ringrazio e sarò con voi a sentire le, le comunicazioni che vedono coinvolte anche i ricercatori dell'Associazione Zoologica. Grazie ancora. 那现在呢，我就不占大家更多的时间了，但是我会一直在这儿跟大家一起就听取大家的呃讨论。那与此同时呢，我再次呃再次表达代替这个我们的负责人嗯、呃、安东尼奥洛贝托这个呃达诺瓦洛教授呃来向大家问好，谢谢。拜拜。Grazie mille. E, prima di passare, abbiamo concluso il primo panel dei saluti istituzionali e prima di passare al secondo panel voglio ringraziare、eh, tutte le istituzioni che sono presenti e tutti coloro che hanno supportato la realizzazione di questo workshop, in particolare Ispra e la dottoressa Isabella Buttino e il、ehm, La, la Zeijian, Zeijian Ocean University, l'Università di Pisa e la stazione Anton Dorn. 嗯，那我现在呢，呃，要再次感谢，就是这次为我们的呃这次活动，嗯、呃，提供了这个支持的。刚才我们说的，呃，首先是这个意大利的呃国家级的这个呃研究院，还有呃海洋呃海洋那个浙江海洋大学，还有我们刚才提到的呃这个动物研究站。感谢所有为这次的研讨会来提供呃支持的人们，呃付出努力的人们，谢谢大家。OK。Thank you very much. Now we can move to English, and uh, now uh, we can go to the panel number two, which is the scientific part, scientific and technological research applied to marine science. And I leave the floor to the chairs, Dr. Isabella Buttino and Dr.、Uh, Chao. Please, Isabella, you can take the floor. Thank you, Alessandra. Good morning. Good afternoon. Thank you again for your participation to this first bilateral、uh, workshop in Italy, China.、Um, this is the、uh, scientific panel、uh, with which uh,、um, colleagues uh, from Italy and China, scientific institutions, will、um, talk about.、Uh, um, The topics uh, of uh, common interest uh, between uh, both uh, uh, countries, but I um, uh, would like to uh, uh, left the, the words to、uh, Dr. Chao, uh, that uh, uh, is a PhD student in uh, Ispra. Uh, Yeah, and, uh, with uh, the University of Naples,、uh, Federico said. So please,、uh, ciao. First of all,、uh, thank you for your participation, and、uh, I left you the the, the, the table. Okay. <laughs> okay.、Um, good morning, everyone. Um, it's a great honor to be invited to this、uh, workshop and.、Uh, As the, 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 the doctor Isabella Puccino、uh, said, I I was the、uh, the PhD from the ISPLA, and, and uh, uh, now I'm the, the assistant dean of the Pisa Marine Graduate School.、Um, it's a, a great pleasure for me to、uh, uh, to be the chairman of this session.、Um, Now,、uh, please allow me to introduce our the first uh, speaker. Uh, it's, it's, it's okay. Yeah.、Uh, the、um, first week,、uh, first uh, speaker, uh, Doctor Isabella Putino.、Um, it's、uh, a great honor for me to uh, invite, uh, introduce、uh, her to all of us because、uh, she is my PhD tutor in Italy.、Um, she comes from the ISPLA. And devoted to the study about marine ecotoxicology, the topic of her speech 
is 15 years of collaboration with uh, the university, uh, uh, university uh, Zhejiang Ocean University from the functional biology to ecotoxical uh, genomic of marine plankton. Please join me to uh, welcome our guest speaker, Isabella. Okay. Thank you, Chao. Can you hear me? Yes. Ah, okay, okay. Because I just started my presentation. Can you see mm -hmm. the, the screen? Yes. Okay. So, here yeah, I would focus on those topics with which I started uh, times ago the collaboration with the Zaija Goshen and West. First, when I was a researcher at the Statistical College in Naples, as uh, Antonio remember me, and then uh, when I moved in Ispra in Livorno, and uh, I will speak about the main, main results obtained by this collaboration. Uh, during my presentation, I will briefly introduce the contribution of other colleagues uh, with whom I am collaborating. Uh, such as Dr. Elenia Caltrotenuto of Stazione Geologica in Naples and the PhD student Flavio Rotolo, with whom we are both relators, and uh, Professor Maurizio Mazzei and Dr. Simona Di Gregorio of the University of Pisa. Just curiosity, comparing the territory of China with those of Italy. It is interesting that although Italy has a territory that is 30 times smaller than China, coastal, coastal extension uh, is only half in Italy with respect to China. And Isabella, the... scusa, ma non vediamo la presentazione. Ah, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Cannot see the presentation? No, oh, Isabella, yet. we don't see it. we don't see it either. I think there are you can try to to share it again. Okay, sorry. Uh, so, but I, I, it seems that uh, uh, this share. Isabella, I think yeah. you should first open your uh, your file. Oh, that's okay. It looks like now. Not 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 yet. It's loading. I think uh, uh, we're about to see your screen. I think you should open your file on your own screen first. Then you yes. should see something. Just... Okay, oh, can you oh, see that, that's, now? That's, that's, yes, okay. yes. Okay, okay. That, that is very slow. <laughs> so, uh, have you seen the first one? Uh, no, we see the second one. You can put in presentation mode, maybe. Okay, so. so okay, we see. It. Okay, thank you. Sorry for the comment. Um, so, uh, as I say, it is interesting to note that uh, uh, although Italy has a territory that is 30 times smaller than China, the coastal extension of Italy is only half than China. But uh, it's very impressive that the cost ratio area is 20 times higher in Italy than in China. So, uh, that's why... Uh, uh, as just described by the president uh, uh, Ispra, devoted, devotes most of the uh, research activities uh, to marine sciences with the laboratories located uh, from northern to southern Italy. And uh, uh, with the, the 21 regional environmental agency is part of uh, the Italian National System for Environmental Protection, ISPRA s In particular, in Livorno, the section for the ecological risk assessment in marine water uh, supports um, the Ministry uh, of the Environment, proposed guidelines for uh, legislations to improve legislation to protect the marine ecosystem and to manage dredged uh, marine sediments. 
the research activity in Livorno are mainly focused on uh, three different areas, uh, technology for via marine model organisms uh, that are used uh, as model organisms in monitoring uh, seawater and sediments, uh, taking into consideration physical, chemical, and ecotoxical genomic uh, approach, and uh, also developing, uh, sorry, I move this one, uh, developing uh, um, uh, uh, the technology for remediation um, of a marine environment for a possible eco sustainable reuse of decontaminated marine matrices in agreement with the green, blue, and circular economy concepts. Uh, our collaboration with the Zhejiang Goshen University began due to their interest in the project regarding the massive production of copepods as uh, they and they use as an alternative live diet for fish larvae of commercial interest. This project was funded by Campania Region and developed at the Statue Archaeological uh, Anthodon in Naples. Uh, during this, this project, pieces of wild copepods of uh, 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 were reared in an experimental system, and these uh, copepods uh, have been successful fish larvae. Uh, copper uh, or ninety uh, percent of the total uh, are in fact the insects of due to their ocean are even compared to cows because they are herbivores or filtered or microalgae and attacked the quantity. Model organisms in are important food for fish larvae and are considered a good source for much in biodegradation of polymers. The Dr. Simona Di Grebe show you the operation of Zhang, who was laboratory at the East Coast of one year. We implemented our on how to grow copepods for use both in aquaculture and ecology. Focus widely used as of this experience arose to answer two questions. Uh, two biological questions, such as how do copepods respond to different chemical stress? Does the gene expression differ? Copepods are exposed to toxic. And uh, this contest at the Russian University founded fellowship at the University of the Second, and uh, aimed to act over chemicals. Including contaminants, nanoparticles, and uh, um, demonstration conducted Dr. Chow Zhu. This topic is now the object of the new PhD of founded by the Stratiological Institute and there will be. Later on, by Flavio Rotolo and Dr. Elena Carpino. The child so we implemented uh, the herbs preserve eggs in order to use them in appropriate time. Toxic effect of the nanoparticles, such as Chaton Sapopet. Microalgae. And finally, for the first time, the, the 
JavaScript on assembly and different question analysis uh, on the Kalanoid top of uh, exposed the semicolon. Um, this is why to understand the effect of contaminants, personal biology of topicals, and future analysis on subtropical in the Zhejiang Ocean. In this context, the idea is knowledge on marine zooplankton biology, such as uh, including uh, ecology, economic, and knowledge, with ecotoxicology, analyze the effect on the functional biology of corticoids. For environmental, but this can be also used for aquaculture technology as copepod as a, a, a basis of a web. And if the new PhD will be the part of the university, uh, conduct the uh, uh, university of PISA. We we'll start and uh, we we'll focus on the bioma of the interest in copepods, education in aquaculture. This will be discussed with Professor Tomaceri in this section. Uh, therefore, uh, after of the random hour, this and child and the uh, and uh, the next step establish the joint laboratory regarding the ecotoxicology functional biology plankton that uh, will contribute to deepening the top common interest between Italy and we will increase on resource management protection of the marine environment. For your okay. Ciao, please. Uh, okay. Um, thank you, uh, Isabella. It's a uh, uh, really a uh, wonderful report. Thanks. Okay. Uh, next, uh, the next speaker is Professor Xiao Junyan, the Secretary of uh, the Party Community of Zhejiang Ocean University. Um, uh, devoted to the study about uh, the uh, microalgae nutrition habitat biology of mussels and uh, large yellow croaker. The topic of his speech is uh, molecular phenomena and uh, uh, mechanisms in marine uh, adaptation of muscle. Uh, welcome, Professor Xiao Junyan. Thank you, Dr. Zhou. So dear all participants, I'm pleased to give this uh, presentation uh, on the topic of muscle. My presentation is molecular phenomena and the possible mechanisms in environmental adaption so this is some of the research advances the, based on the collaboration between all our partners. So I will give uh, 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 the first uh, some introductions. Then I will give some uh, uh, key scientific questions based on research and the three uh, new discoveries uh, for, for these, for these uh, uh, two years. First, let's see the uh, introduction. So I think everybody here knows that uh, agriculture is very important in both in China and in Italy, and they provide the uh, proteins for future uh, uh, humankind. humankind. Uh, the, especially for the uh, mussel uh, among the shellfish, they, they give some uh, uh, specific characteristics such as strong environmental adaptation, 
and the interspecific hybridization and the strong tolerance to disease. And they, they have the, uh, uh, a specific lifestyle based on immobilization and the filter feeding. So the muscle uh, could be a very good scientific uh, subject for our research to understand it's, uh, uh, why they can have the global distribution and why they can give the monitoring tools for the water quality and also how we can expand its commercial potentials based on health and environmental sustainability. So these are some goals for our research. And uh, uh, very uh, luckily, uh, the, the field uh, location of our university is very near the farming area of uh, China for the uh, Mutilus Cruscus. This is called the uh, black shell uh, uh, mussel. So the black shell mussel have an area of 2,000 to 1,200 1, hectares with annual output of 140,000 tons. So this is the uh, most important uh, uh, single species of the bustle in, in China. So this place is called the hometown of the Mytilus polluscus. So our research is, be, is mostly on this, on this uh, 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 sample, on this specific sample. So the re research scientific question we are focusing on to know why they can grow fast, why they can uh, adapt to the low uh, uh, environmental uh, 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 with the low disease. So the uh, the subject for our research is uh, is mostly focusing on the uh, antimicrobial peptide uh, profiles and its uh, interactions with uh, microbes in the environment and some of the specific metabolic process we found. So these are some of the uh, research strategy based on the uh, metagenomics mostly. So we have the collaboration project approved by the China Natural Science Fund. Uh, the, the, the project is called Discovery and Mining of Immunity Uniqueness of Marine Muscle for Environmental Adaptation. So this is some of the uh, 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 research. Uh, 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 uh. So what first, such as uh, molecular diversity and the characterization of the new uh, Mutilus uh, AMP, and it's uh, uh, some of the uh, 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 questions based on the interaction between the uh, uh, marine organisms and the environment. So now I will give some uh, 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 research advances based on our, our, our collaborative research. First, the novel insight into antimicrobial peptides of muscle. So in, in, the, in the whole, whole muscles up to now, we found 53 uh, antimicrobial peptides belong to 12 families have been ident identified among those meticusing and uh, Meticheating are the two MP first discovered from the meticulous cross curse, and some other uh, uh, AMP called crostin like is a novel MP detected from the trace krypton of muscle. So the, all these are the other other uh, the AMP uh, found in the in the muscle. It showed the muscle is very rich for the AMP. Actually, it is the most rich uh, uh, shellfish species uh, in all the uh, marine organisms. So uh, based on this uh, study, we can be sure uh, it could be a very good uh, uh, subject for our uh, deepening the understanding how the shellfish contains the MPs, how the MP can react with environmental changes. So we studied the the AMP, the distribution, and it's uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the tissue, and it's uh, expression among the uh, uh, seasons. So we found uh, among all the uh, AMPs, 
they have sometimes they have the uh, specific uh, sex uh, specific distribution of the mutilus AMP and the three AMP presented sensitivity to the fungus in 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 in, in, in this case in this case these are the 12 families of the AMP and these three are they you, you see the, the the red dot it means they they are very sensitive to the uh uh uh, uh fungus and uh, all these three uh, four AMPs they are sensitive to the uh, gram gram positive bacteria uh, and it is uh, strange, uh, but uh, uh, they showed that most of the AMPs present no or weak sensitivity to the gram-negative bacteria. So it's showing some interesting points how the, uh, the, 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 the muscle uh, have the re very rich repertoire of the AMP to react with the uh, uh, gram uh, uh, positive uh, bacteria and the fungi, but they are they are not uh, have any uh, not very sensitive response to the gram uh, negative bacteria. So it shows there are some interactions or uh, 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 collaborative maybe uh, interactions between the gram uh, negative bacteria and the muscle host. So these are the, some of the, of the new research. Uh, we found uh, uh, very interesting uh, uh, points that the muscle contains the novel anthropod-like defenses. Uh, we named it the, this new defense, uh, new uh, uh, AMP. Uh, the, the, the new name is called uh, mythical fencing. The mythical fencing are uh, showing they have some specific uh, 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 disulfide uh, patterns for the AMP, and they are more uh, linked with the anthropod uh, class of the of the marine organisms. So maybe the uh, during the evolution of the uh, marine organisms, uh, some of the of the of the uh, uh, AMP they are originated from the shellfish, then moved into the uh, evolu evolved into the anthropod uh, class of the marine organisms. And we also did some uh, uh, expression of the meticosin in, in, blood, uh, in, in, in blood cells and other tissues. We found they, they gave some uh, different responses to uh, various uh, microbes. Uh, these are the uh, results of or, or showing uh, a battery of the uh, uh, bioactivities for its uh, 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 peptide uh, uh, patterns and its uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, modules. So our study preliminarily revealed that the alpha helix, uh, beta hairpin, and the Y core are the key motif for the activity of some mythical fencing. And uh, uh, on the uh, an, uh, other side, we also found a new histone uh, is involved in the immune response of the uh, in the muscle. Or uh, this may be also a new kind of AMP, a very uh, different kind of AMP. They are the the the, the, the fragment of the histone uh, uh, released after the uh, uh, inflammation, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, interactions. So these are some of the uh, Western blot uh, 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 results. So this should be uh, first discovered in Mitrus, but we still need some uh, 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 more solid uh, 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 improvement for, 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 for this study. So these are some of the uh, uh, new, 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 new studies are, are, are ongoing. So, uh, 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 in conclusion, uh, the, the muscle AMP is a very good model for analysis of the origin and the evolution of the uh, shellfish. And the muscle AMP are, give a arsenal for fighting invaded microbes. And the structure and the function diversity of muscle AMP are essential for immune systems for its genus 
and more than 200 genes with the possible AMP structures were detected in the genome of the muscle. So we, up to now, we've already identified more than 50 genes with the uh, AMP, and uh, we are uh, furthering our research. So this, this could be the leading field in our collaboration research in this field. Uh, second, I will give some uh, uh, report for the uh, novel perspe uh, perspective on the tissue scaled microbiota um, for the 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 muscle. That means the uh, how the muscle were interacted with the, with the bacteria in the agriculture uh, areas. So we we separated three areas. The first one is the farming area. That means the 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 the, the, the bacteria direct direct directly interacted with the host. Then the uh, MBA means the the near uh, sea area between the agriculture area and the, the the open sea. And then the 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 BA the BA means the the outside the the the, the agriculture. Area. So in, 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 in this case, we see the, 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 the difference of the uh, micro, uh, micro bi uh, bacteria to, uh, biodiversity uh, were, are, are identified. So this, this is, so why the, the, the difference between the, 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 the three different areas for the, for the muscle agriculture? So we are we are testing some of the of, of the hypotheses for the uh, uh, between the uh, bacteria and the the, the, the the shellfish interactions. There are uh, some 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 theories we are we are now more approving to it is the deterministic uh, process. That means the host has some specific functions to attract. Some of the specific bacteria for its uh, for its interactions. Especially, we found that the 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 gels of the of the muscle. They sometimes they will, they can output more uh, so dissolved organic particles and the uh, DOM. So they will attract more specific bacteria, which can approve uh, uh, help the host to 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 degrade the. Uh, Dissolved organic materials uh, on, on on these functions, the, uh, the 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 bacteria can accelerate the uh, uh, carbon sink uh, in the agriculture area. So in, in the, the, this 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 is uh, some of the of the of the of the results we we uh, we, we 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 can show it, we can see it. So this is a is a di di diversity increase in the in the in the in the agriculture area. So this 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 is a this is a new uh, 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 hypothesis for our study up to now. So we think the the, the muscle can be can be functioned as a as a as a as a as a pump to accelerate the uh, accumulation of more. Uh, 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 photo bio, uh, photo uh, uh, um, synthetic bacteria, which can uh, accumulate more dissolved carbon into the uh, carbon sink. So that means the muscle can play the uh, accelerating for the uh, uh, car uh, blue carbon uh, sink. So this 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 is the illustration for the for 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 for, for this process. So we are uh, uh, testing this hypothesis uh, up to now. So, so this this, this I think it's a, it's a, it's a quite good uh, 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 explanation for how the agriculture can play for the carbon for the car blue carbon estimation. So that means they they not only out output the 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 the, 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 the shellfish uh, body. And also the shellfish uh, 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 shell, and also they can play the third role. That means they can ac uh, accelerate the the, the 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 environmental carbon uh, flux uh, with the uh, host uh, accumulating and the recruitment of the uh, specific uh, bacteria uh, between the host and the environment.
So the the, the third uh, uh, discovery uh, for for our research is we found the the the, the muscle contain high content of uh, urea. Why the urea can play any function, physiological functions for the fish is very uh, uh, scarcely known up to now. There are very scarce scientific research for the urea function for the uh, for the shellfish. Between urea, we, we, we think uh, urea is not content in the in the fear shellfish because the shellfish they excrete the ammonia during their metabolic uh, process. But during our research, we found uh, high content of urea in the in the in the, in, the, in the muscle. So, what's the fu physiological functions for for these specific uh, uh, chemicals? So, th th this is the content we an an analyzed. So, you can see the the muscle contain uh, uh, high quality uh, uh, high con high content of muscle. Uh, the, for the process of uh, for the for the for the for the urea uh, uh, process, we examined uh, uh, of the transcriptomics. We found many genes in the in the in the uh, classic uh, only sign urea cycles. So we found almost every every genes for the for the for the for the only sign urea uh, cycle, but. With the exception, that means there there's a one key key of the of the genes to start the only sign urea cycle. That means the 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 OTC uh, gene. That means the 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 the, the ammonia accumulation for the for the only sign uh, urea cycle is absent. So we think maybe this uh, only sign urea cycle is played a very different function uh, with the uh, classic uh, classic models so we we now we are proposing a new name for this for this for this cycle we 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 named it the aspirate uh, urea process that means the aspirate uh, can be used as a as a, as a, as a nitrogen source for the for the urea so the urea can be used as a, for its uh, URE to use as a, a, a carbon dioxide and ammonia. So the ammonia and the di uh, carbon dioxide, maybe they can play a very specific physiological response for the, uh, for the, for, for the muscle to adapt to its environment. Professor Yan, just one minute. Okay, please. so this is the, this is the last 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 slide. So we 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 found maybe the the the, the, the ammonia and the di di carbon side can be used for the for the for the for the for the for the, for the muscle shield uh, 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 mitigation for its for its for, for its uh, adaptations. So that's all for 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 our for our research. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Yang, for this very, very interesting presentation. And hope that uh, we will also collaborate uh, in the joint laboratory all together in, on this uh, um, this topic. Uh, uh, I if, play, if, if there are questions, uh, you can uh, ask some questions. No. Okay. Uh, next, it's a great, great pleasure to, to introduce Professor Lisandro Benedetti Cecchi from University of Pisa uh, with the Marine Biology Research and the Innovative Innovation at the University of Pisa. Please, Lisandro, and thank you for your participation. Hello, and good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending where you are. I'm sharing. Okay, again, good morning. I'm uh, going to provide a brief overview of research and innovation taken at the University of Pisa. So, um, different uh, uh, departments are involved in this research. And you see here 
by Department of Biology and Department of Veterinary. Uh, those are highlighted here because they also provide teachers and professors that are actively involved in the double degree of marine biology the Dijon Ocean. Um, Lisandro, excuse me, we can't hear you. Oh. At least very, very bad. I'm trying to press the mic and stay closer to the mic. Is this better? To stay here? Yeah. Yes, Lisandro, we hear you now. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so, okay, I was saying that there are. Um, different lab, uh, departments involved, and uh, the research from marine biology is mostly undertaken in the Department of Biology and Veterinary, which are also the departments that provide the teachers involved in the double degree with uh, marine biology with the Jean Ocean Science University. But the research is also undertaken by another department, agriculture, pharmacy, engineering, earth sciences, and, and social sciences, including ecology. ecology. Um, what I'm going to do now is to present some of the research lines and areas dividing first between um, fundamental research and then moving to more applied biotechnological side research. So one of research is really a historical one that's looking and dealing with the taxonomy and the phylogeny of uh, marine species and particularly marine invertebrates. And this is an important area of research that allow us to track the evolution and adaptation of organisms to environmental change, which include both climate change and the direct stresses induced by human activities, most along coastline. And when we look at and um, dealing with uh, environmental uh, uh, disturbances and stress, cannot these days neglect the impact of climate change. So we have uh, um, researchers actively involved in understanding the consequences of climate change, both global warming and extreme climate events on marine biodiversity by focusing most on foundation species, those that really provide habitats to many other organisms and are mostly involved in the maintenance of biodiversity and of course, marine climatic events do not operate in isolation. And so there are synergistic possible synergistic and compound effects between global change and climate events with local anthropogenic stressors. So we are also looking at this synergistic and compound. And this includes also emerging um, stressors like light pollution and um, harvesting of uh, uh, marine organisms and uh, these interactions that are examined and tackled through laboratory studies but also manipulative field experiments. Biodiversity monitoring is also a main area of research in our department and we are uh, we link and we collaborate with the GOOSE, which is the Global Ocean Observing System. And I'm a member of the Biology and Ecosystem Panel with responsibility on developing essential ocean variables to monitor the status and trends of marine biodiversity globally. And a specific responsibility for macroalgae. And so these activities are important to track changes, including dramatic collapses and regime shifts, transforming productive, highly productive and diverse ecosystems into much less productive and much less ecosystem. And this requires developing also methods to uh, an early warning signals and approaches to map resilience and loss of resilience along coastal environments. Here you have an example of a recent, a recent project in which we have developed resilience map for macroalgal and invertebrate communities along coastlines in four islands of the Tuscan archipelago, which is the archipelago of islands just in front of, of the coast of Tuscany. And this is an important uh, um, um, support for managers that now can have uh, uh, tools to address risk hazards like undesired uh, oil spill, for example, due to accidents, uh, 
between ships and then they know exactly uh, sorry they know now where actually we have hot spot of biodiversity that should be preserved in the undesired and hopefully not a real uh, um, case of accident and of course we are also implementing novel monitoring and observing techniques including environmental dna and deploying sensors to uh, monitor continuously changes in the environment and this is particularly done into marine protected areas to move from marine protected areas towards smart marine protected areas where measuring biodiversity change and environmental change is done automatically and continuously. Species invasions are also an important area of research for us and their impact because we know they can cause strong economic impacts to native assemblages. And marinas and harbors are fussy for invasion. So we have projects looking at invasive species or non-indigenous species introduced in harbor and how they then develop and spread into nearby natural environments. Another important area of research, and now we are moving slowly towards more applied issues is to develop a nature-based solution to mitigate the impacts of climate change. So we are looking at interaction between foundation species and species that may have important commercial, that have important commercial value, and so how the foundation species like seagrasses in this mesocosm experiment mitigate the effect of ocean acidification on sea urchin larvae. So control, control treatments with sea uh, grasses fully dense and fully covered uh, areas of seagrasses, reduce pH, uh, actually mitigate uh, the reduction in pH, and so they maintain healthy larval sea urchins, where we observe malformed sea urchin larvae in uh, control uh, in mesocosms in which the mitigating effect of seagrass is not evident. And of course, part of our monitoring experimental activities involve in tracking changes in rising temperature and warming and looking at using field experiments how global warming is going to impact the productivity of ecosystems and again with the ultimate goal of finding mitigating solutions for this impact. There are areas of research that are more directly linked towards biotechnology, and these involve looking at the effects of different toxicants on marine organisms, and also testing some compounds of marine origin uh, for potential drugs, for example, to, to treat diabetes mellitus. And here we have compounds from different organisms, including sponges and another organism being tested. And also we have research activities and also um, uh, early warning uh, system for microbial contamination in recreational water. And finally, emerging, talking about emerging impacts, marine litter and plastic debris is certainly one of them, including in, in, in addition to light pollution, which I mentioned earlier. So uh, reducing marine pollution, developing new tools that allow us to uh, clear water from this undesired source of stress for organisms and ultimately also threatening for our health, of course, are important areas of research that we are developing in, in, uh, in, our, in our laboratories. And then we have research areas for ecological restoration using innovative and eco-sustainable methods for large-scale propagation and cultivation of transplanting of doom plants and sea grasses to restore degraded habitats. And then we have also research that use uh, stranded biomass, mostly from macroalgae and sea grasses, to develop new products, including pots and other materials that can be used commercially in the future, but that are made in using uh, stranded biomass, so in a very eco-sustainable, in a very eco-sustainable way. So these are just some hints on the different areas of research covered in our university by different laboratories. I must say most of this is done in the laboratory in the Department of Biology and also the Department of Veterinary. In terms of research impact, we are able to attract European projects. We have got three, four new projects from Horizon Europe, 
uh, and the old H2020, Future Mars is one uh, of the last co um, project from uh, um, Horizon 2020, the previous program. We have interacts, collaborating strictly with local authorities like the Tuscan Regional Council, and we have uh, projects on the implementation of marine protected areas. And the new one, Marine Sabres, which has been newly founded uh, right now, and we start um, the PI on this, and we start this September for looking at blue carbon and mitigating procedure and approaches for climate safe change on foundation species. Strong networking. This, uh, this slide, this picture shows uh, some of the research collaboration we have all over the world with very important uh, centers, including SINA, and we have interaction collaboration with the MIT in US, Stanford University, and also in some very remote and pristine area for coral research and marine protected areas in Australia and New Zealand. In terms of papers, we have been publishing, and it's uh, it's one of our mission. We have we are able to publish in leading international journal, including journal from the family nature, from from sorry the nature uh, family, and also in other papers in journal, leading journal of PNS, plus biology, and current biology. And uh, we have among in, in our colleagues uh, scientists that rank among the top two percent scientists based on a global citation index. So we have a strong research impact in, in, the, in the scientific community. Um, and also there are now papers coming, started coming out with collaboration with the Jean Ocean Science University. We have this paper, uh, which is in the making on, on Pernaviridis. This is a paper I just I published last year with, with my former PhD student, Yan Yuhi, uh, he and me, uh, and the other papers are coming out, which also show the strong collaboration with Zhejiang. Yesterday, I was in the committee for the final degree exam. The students from Zhejiang, from the double degree, I must say, was impressed of the high quality work that has been done there, and uh, and so there are all um, connection and facilities in place to strengthen all these collaborations in the future. Um, and I think the University of Pisa and our research is well positive to address the challenges of climate change, the interaction with other anthropogenic stressor to, to try to halt or even reverse the biodiversity crisis, crisis, and more importantly, to contribute to what has been now termed the blue economy, which actually requires using our environment wisely and sustainably. Of course, we need to extract resources from the ocean. To, to feed a growing human population. We need resources for our welfare and, and for human well-being, but we need fundamental ecological understanding to ensure this is done in a sustainable way, to preserve nature for the next generation. So with this, I am done, and I really wish to thank you for listening. Thank you, Professor Berlitschicki. Uh, now, please. Do the next. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Lisandro. Uh, thank you for your report. And also thank you for your help uh, for the uh, de defense meeting of yesterday. It's hard work. Okay. Uh, okay. Now the it next was speaker a is. It was a okay. 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 Now the next speaker is Professor Zheng Minglu. As a professor of Marine Science and Technology College of Zhejiang Ocean University, the topic of his speech is a summary of recent research activities in National Research Center for Marine uh, Gene Plasm Resources in Zhejiang Ocean University. Welcome, Professor Zhen Minglu. Uh, yeah. Please, the microphone. Oh, can you hear me? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, hello. Professor Isabella, nice to meet you. 
Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, I'm Doctor Tamir Ri from Zhejiang Ocean University. Uh, I'm a staff in National Research Center of Marine Genetic Resources in Zhejiang Ocean University. So now I like to introduce some recent research activity in our uh, research center, and uh, hopefully uh, we can seek some uh, cooperation uh, in the future uh, for some research field we are focusing on. Now, uh, firstly, I will give a brief introduction of the research and our research center. Our center, uh, research center, is uh, was founded in two thousand and eleven and reorganized in uh, two thousand and thirteen as a national research center for marine genetic resources. This uh, uh, center was uh, founded uh, uh, founded and supported by National Development and the Reform Commission of Central Government. Now the center have uh, thirteen. Uh, 16 faculties and uh, have uh, five research groups. Uh, the main uh, interest of a research field of the research center, uh, we have three uh, main research uh, research field. One, the first one is adaptive evolution of trade and the gene resources uh, exploration. The second field, uh, research field is genetic breeding and the gene resources uh, utilization. The third is reproductive physiology and seedling uh, production. Now I uh, will introduce uh, some recent research activity uh, uh, in the center. For the research field of adaptive evolution of trait and the genetic resources exploration, uh, the first project I'd like to introduce is the large scale sequencing of flat fish genomes, which have provided insight into how a flat and a symmetrical board plan in Talus fish can be shaped. Uh, we are doing this because uh, flat fish uh, uh, have a very unusual and specialized uh, uh, body plan uh, known uh, to date. Uh, they have very flat and thin uh, um, body, body wall and uh, uh, compared with uh, uh, common uh, flat uh, common uh, fish species. And also they have a, a, a symmetrical, uh, board plan. How this uh, unusual specialized uh, board plan uh, originated? Uh, this this question is very important both in evolution and in uh, gene resources uh, exploration because uh, uh, some genes uh, um, um, about the complex traits such as a board plan can be potentially used in the future's uh, genetic breeding of fish species. Um, we analyze the genome of 11 flat fish species, representing uh, nine of the 14 families in this uh, order. And we found that genes related to hampered musculature and reduced lipid may have functions in the revolution of a flat body plan, and genes related to WNT and the retinoic acid pathway may contribute to a symmetrical body plan of flat fish. This gene revealed in this study may be uh, important to future genetic breeding of fish species. We have published our result in uh, international uh, journal, Nature Genetics. Uh, now, for this field, we now are also uh, seeking to explore some uh, critical uh, uh, genes uh, that potentially be useful in gene breeding. Uh, for example, genes related to immune ability uh, gene related to temperature resistance uh, for uh, uh, marine animals. For uh, second research field, uh, the um, most important uh, uh, project 
we are doing now is the select selective breeding of cold resistance in large yellow croaker. We are doing this because large yellow croaker uh, is very popular in China, and uh, the annual uh, agricultural production of this species alone is 160,000 tons per year. But the problem for this species is that uh, they have a very narrow uh, temperature endurance uh, 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 scope. S uh, so uh, the agriculture area for this species is narrowly restricted to the two provinces in China. So uh, by using the traditional uh, quantitative genetic, genetic select breeding and uh, a molecular, a molecular assistant uh, genetic breeding method. We are trying to improve the uh, uh, temperature endurance scope of uh, this species so that we can grow them in a more wider uh, region uh, in coast water of China to improve the total, total production of uh, this species. Um, uh, in addition to uh, this, we now we are also seeking to uh, make some uh, select breeding for body color trait in some uh, species, and also we are using uh, uh, sex control technology to uh, uh, improve the growth trait from some uh, other fish species. Uh, for the field of reproductive physiology and seed during production, uh, the most important project I want to introduce is the uh, reproductive physiology and seed during production of cephalopod species. Uh, we are doing this because cephalopod species is very uh, important uh, worldwide and uh, they uh, have some uh, special uh, traits uh, such as fast growth rates and can be uh, ideal for agriculture. Uh, uh, our, uh, our center is the first institute in China uh, to mass product, product uh, uh, cephalopod, uh, cephalopod species. Now we can successfully uh, reproduce in large scale four uh, kind of cuttlefish species. And for some uh, cuttlefish species, for example, Sepular uh, japonica, uh, we began to use the artificial uh, seedling to uh, make stocking and enhance the fish resources in uh, coastal water of China. And now the uh, uh, the fish yielding of this species uh, has been greatly increased in recent years. Uh, uh, now we are uh, 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 seeking uh, some uh, cooperation worldwide for some research field, uh, field we are focusing. For example, for uh, the first research field, adaptive evolution of trade and the gene resource exploration, or oh, we have uh, seek cooperation uh, in uh, three sections. First, firstly, first section is adaptive evolution of species and the marine environment, uh, including human impact. And the second uh, uh, section uh, we seek uh, a cooperation is uh, exploration of trait related genes using integrative genomics. The third section is gene resources, utilization, and the genetic breeding. For the second uh, research field, we seek improve uh, cooperation uh, in uh, the following uh, section. First, control of precautions property in captive cultured cephalopod species. Uh, second, tagging and real-time tracking of the real cephalopod species. And, uh, and third, uh, habit restoration for cephalopod species. So, uh, uh, we uh, sincerely uh, hope that we can uh, uh, cooperate and work together uh, uh, in the 
research fields uh, that mentioned above in the future. And uh, may, we may also include all this uh, uh, research field and the project uh, in the joint uh, doctor uh, um, uh, joint program of, of doctor education uh, in, in, involves this uh, project in, in, in it. Uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Professor uh, Jin Minglu. Okay. Thank you, thank you. And uh, we are a little bit late, uh, but uh, now I will introduce you, uh, Dr. Ilenia Carotenuto and uh, the PhD student Flavio Rotolo from the Stazione Zoologica Dorn. Uh, please, Ilenia, uh, I don't know uh, who start before. Ilenia or Flavio? Yes, my ah, microphone okay. was switched off. Okay. So, okay. good morning. Thank you, Isabella, and uh, thank you, Ciao. Nice to see you again. And thank you for inviting me and organizing this uh, interesting, uh, interesting uh, workshop. So, for my title, I will just give a brief overview to leave the, the screen to Flavio on the ecophysiology and gene expression of copepods uh, related to natural and anthropogenic stressors. So my activity, the Stazione Zoologica is a... Uh, yes, sorry, okay. Uh, as um, Antonio Terlizzi already mentioned, it's, uh, it's been funded in uh, 1872, and this year we celebrate the 150 year of research at the Stazione Zoologica. So, um, uh, in addition to the main location in Naples, uh, we have now two more interdepartmental seats in southern Italy, Sicily and Calabria, and uh, three marine centers, uh, one in the island of Ischia and two in the north, in Genoa and Pano. So we are um, widening our, let's say, uh, possibility to collaborate on different uh, also coastal areas of the, of the, of the country. So uh, my specific activity uh, focus on the one main overarching question, that is the copper board response in terms of raising reproductive physiology and gene expression to toxic phytoplankton and uh, pollutants. So I mainly address uh, uh, topics uh, of development, uh, reproduction, uh, trophic interaction, molecular ecology and transcriptomics, uh, uh, working mainly on uh, the Gulf of Naples, but also adjacent areas of the Mediterranean Sea, using a, let's say, a um, approach that goes from the population, the individual uh, organism, and the genes. So um, matching different, uh, let's say, technologies and uh, observation. So I just want to give you two examples of this uh, uh, scientific activity. One, uh, in, uh, in particular, that is the response of the copper pods to toxic algae. And I've chosen this uh, well-known study that uh, Isabella knows very well because uh, she started, she worked in the Stazione on this topic. That's the oxylipins, uh, which are a specific type of toxin produced by diatoms uh, and that derives, derives from lipids that uh, impair the copper pod fitness and alter their gene expression. So by merging different disciplines, uh, uh, we were able to uh, connect and relate the chemical content of this toxin in the phytoplankton community to the low reproductive success and uh, survival of uh, non-feeding nauplia in the copper pods. And finally, the, the altered gene expression in the females that impaired the uh, the survival of the first uh, nauplia by altering the reproductive and developmental uh, genes uh, uh, in the maternal uh, animal. So this, these were just an example of the two publications uh, related to these topics. And then finally, let's say the, the more, um, the, 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 this so-called uh, toxicology and transcriptomic uh, approach uh, that uh, Isabella has already mentioned, which uh, uh, is aimed at ad addressing the response of the copepods to uh, contaminants. In uh, one case, for example, 
nanoparticles, nickel nanoparticles that are emerging contaminants and that um, have uh, affected the, the transcriptome and the gene expression analysis of the model copper pod Acacia tonsa. And uh, more recently, the comparative response of uh, copper pod species, native copper pod species, to polluted sediments from uh, an industrial area near the Gulf of Naples. So um, we were able to demonstrate that the native copper pods were much more sensitive than the modern species, posing an implication for the ecological impact of these toxicants on, in the natural environment. Finally, Merging these two approaches, uh, we had the opportunity to, to have a funded by the PhD, by the um, Stazione Zoologica a PhD that uh, with uh, Isabella we are coordinating uh, and Flavio Rotolo will just give you an update on the toxicity of emerging contaminants on different congeneric copepod species using an ecotoxicogenomic approach. So just to conclude, uh, I firmly believe that the systems biology approach to understand the functioning of marine ecosystems will reinforce our already established collaboration between Stazione Geologica, the ISPRA and the Zhejiang Ocean University and the University of Pisa to uh, improve our knowledge of, of the sea. So thank you very much. And uh, if you have questions or I will leave the screen to uh, Flavio. Okay, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Elenia. A uh, long time no say. I, I hope uh, I will see it well. Yes. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, any questions? No, okay. The next speaker is uh, Dr. Xiao Guoying, Associate oh, Sorry, sorry. Oh. No, I had to just. Uh, oh, oh. This is oh, okay. Okay. By means of the presentation of uh, the activity of Flavio Rosso or the uh, uh, Sorry, a moment. Maybe it will be the doctor. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, uh, Elenia, for the presentation. Thank you for uh, inviting me today. It's an honor for me. Uh, so, I am Flavio Rotolo. Uh, my PhD project is uh, uh, in collaboration with the Stazione Zoologica Anton Dorn, uh, the Open University and uh, uh, ISPRA. And my supervisors are uh, Dr. Elena Carotenuto, Dr. Isabella Buttino and Professor uh, Susi. So, as Elena uh, already mentioned, uh, I focus on two species of copepods. One, Acacia tonsa, is an invasive species uh, in the Mediterranean but is a model species in ecotoxicology. Uh, the other one, Acarcia clausi, is a native species in the Mediterranean and is a good candidate model species. So the final uh, overarching aim is to compare uh, physiological and molecular responses of the two species, giving this project an ecotoxicogenomic approach. And uh, finally, to ask if Acarcia clausi is uh, an alternative model species for ecological risk assessment. Uh, so, very briefly, I performed two types of ecotoxicological tests with the two species. The acute test, which lasts 48 hours and uh, uh, requires the, the larva, the naupius, as a starting stage. And the other one, the chronic test, requires the adult and uh, lasts four days. And I exposed uh, these species to two forms of nickel. One is uh, nickel chloride and the, the, the reference toxicant in ecotoxicology, and the other is uh, are nickel nanoparticles, an emerging contaminant of nano-sized uh, scale. Uh, for the uh, gene expression, the molecular part, uh, we performed, here you can see briefly the pipeline, uh, we performed uh, RNA sequencing and real-time qPCR. So from total RNA extraction of exposed females, to uh, the sequencing and then generation of the transcriptome, to uh, the selection of genes of interest and primary design, and uh, the relative expression analysis on uh, real-time PCR. Uh, so, the acute tests show that uh, nauplia of Acarcia clausi are uh, much more sensitive than nauplia of Acarcia dons, up to 100 times for uh, nickel chloride, as you can see here by the EC50 value which is the value 
the amount of substance needed uh, to give an effect in half of the population. Uh, in particular, the value uh, of UC50 of nickel chloride is close to environmental values for uh, Agaxia clausi. Uh, the chronic pest uh, showed instead a similar response, a similar sensitivity in the two species of uh, in the two adults uh, of of, the, of both species of copepods. In fact, over the four days of exposure, both toxicant caused a uh, decrease in egg hatching uh, success and a slight decrease in egg production. Uh, some preliminary results of the gene expression part. Uh, the genes of interest we selected belong to different functions such as uh, oxidative stress, neurotoxicity and reproduction. Uh, so we designed the primers which successfully uh, amplified in uh, PCR uh, for both species. So these sequences are available for both Acacia glauci and Acacia tonsa. And some uh, very recent and preliminary results on relative expression. Uh, of treatment, uh, genes of interest in the treatment versus control uh, show a slight down-regulation down of genes mostly involved in uh, uh, detoxification. So, concluding, uh, nuclei of Acacia clausi are up to 100 times more sensitive than nuclei of Acacia tonsa. Uh, adults of both species, however, seem to have similar responses uh, on the other hand. So, it might be a stage-specific sensitivity of the nucleus. Uh, new transcript sequences are available for uh, both species, and overall this confirms the importance of using uh, local species. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you, uh, the Dr. Uh, Floria. Okay. Is that all? Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, the next speaker is Dr. Xiao Guoyin, the Associate Professor of Zhejiang Ocean University. Uh, the topic of his, his speech is a summary of science and technology development about the food and uh, pharmacy de department of Zhejiang Ocean University. Welcome, uh, Dr. Xiao Guoyin. Uh, Hello, everyone. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay. Ciao. Buongiorno a tutti. For me, uh, I represent for a brief introduce of myself. I'm, my name is uh, Xiao Guoyin. Also, you can call me my nickname Stone. I graduated from Pisa University and uh, almost uh, I passed uh, four years in Pisa. So maybe I'm just a uh, it's my great honor to be here for uh, for make this presentation for a brief introduction of, about our department because I passed my two years for my master's degree in Zhejiang Ocean University. My last four years, my PhD degree in Pisa. So maybe I'm just like I'm a bridge or something like a bone day. So I can communicate for our department and also for our agriculture and the food science and the environment department. So this is my, for well, today I make a presentation about our department. So now I'm working in this department. For today I just in this for, for different uh, parts. First of all, Maybe I should uh, brief introduction about our department, food and pharmacy department. Also, you can see here, maybe some professors have already in our, see our library. So this is a super huge and a super fantastic uh, library. And if next time you come to the Zhoushan or Zhejiang Ocean University, you can, you can check by this, something like this. So, so, so um, this is about our department our the name about our department also here you can see we have uh, we have uh, something like a high uh, high level of uh, 
some representation about the, also you can know this is a typical Chinese certification shows we have a high scientific research background. Also, we have we have almost uh, 16 researchers in our in our department, including me, more than more than 14 professors, and uh, also six of them are doctor supervisors, and uh, also more than 75 of them are doctors. Also, each year we can graduate. We have a uh, more than 120 per year. So we have a master student. So we we have a super super uh, super students. We can focus on our seafood and uh, something research. For our department, we we focus on on this this agriculture food processing and the storage technology. Also, we have different uh, forms and different different factors or different lab. We focus. Uh, all folks on this. As you can see, this is the key technology and the industry of quality guarantee of deep processing of tuna. Maybe I should introduce this is in why I put this on the PC or make on this presentation. Because I in last uh, almost four years, four years in PISA for my PhD degree, maybe we have the tuna. For the ten, we eat, every day we eat a lot of tuna, and uh, maybe around European, all the tuna they all export from Zhoushan. So this is uh, maybe we have a strong introduction uh, research focus on this. And this technology makes uh, makes the tuna for the for the food safety and the storage and make a, a high price also for something like this. So. We move to the next stage. We have a strong cooperation history with with my department for in my PhD degree in PISA. As you can see, this is uh, this is photos last maybe almost uh, 2015, and uh, this is our dean Professor Dern. This is uh, our another associate professors. We last time he make a presentation in. In Pisa, as you can see, also you can see here we have some uh, some something like a friend. We have a cooperation. We have a eat dinner. We have talk about something else. Also, this is uh, last days. I asked my friend to take a photo in Pisa, and also you can see here. This is my owner. I graduated from Pisa, and you can see this is my PhD a PhD certification. So maybe in this slide. We we have uh, just uh, to show us something about we have the uh, communication and uh, we have last uh, last uh, uh, almost uh, eight years we have the bridge we have the communication about the uh, food 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 science and uh, also maybe this is a uh, this is the most interesting point of my presentation here here you can see this is about uh, some organized different uh, research project. As you can see here, I lined on this. This is a red line, and this is a, this is the maybe the specific specific uh, um, funding for for Italian. Maybe this is just for young people. We can apply it for this. This is a, maybe you can see here. The, uh, we can have the mon uh, the money. Just we can call the funding is not so. Uh, the funding is so so nice, and uh, you can see here this is the funding, but this uh, is the Chinese yuan. Also, you can see here we have the super huge two different projects. This is for this one is honored by uh, the Professor Deng, and also this is uh, this is uh, honored by Professor Zhang. Maybe he he can make the presentation uh, next stage. Also, you can see here this is the money. Almost uh, 0 0.6 billion yuan. This is the biggest funding we have this moment. So maybe next stage, this is um, we can make a just a strong cooperation. We can also like uh, our press, our president Ye and uh, Professor Isabella, like them. We have the cooperation not only focus on the papers. We can focus on the fund fundings. So, 
So here, also maybe here we slide. I make the slide of the red one. If we can, for this is specific for Italian or for international, not international young researchers. And then this is not so difficult. And for this one, we have we have, and maybe we have some history or we have some experience. If you want to apply for this, you just can contact to me. Also here we have we just uh, this is the first slide and uh, the this is about our department and uh, this is the four uh, this is three different uh, fact we have uh, our product uh, storage we have a cold chain logistic uh, for ice some technology about this this is about uh, aqua aqua food. Uh, about about the processing we have the quality control we have increased at that. The values so we can have everyone to have a high price for the factory and for the for the sellers. Also, we we have this interesting part for maybe for Italian people or something else. This can make a its extraction and the utilization of nature products. This is this is I think some Italian people focus on this. They want to healthy life or something like this. So we have next time we can have the cooperation about this. And uh, here you can see this all papers. We have the foods, we have the uh, current research in food science, we had a food, food chemistry, we have the we have this is all top, all top in our in our food science. So we this is just a cooperation we have already made with uh, Professor Guidi and uh, different also an and different uh, professors from maybe also my supervisor is Professor Angela Sinai and uh, Professor Bruce, Professor Francesca also also some someone we have uh, we have we have a lot of cooperation on not only for for this and we have maybe next time we can try to make some high level index of the high research papers. And the uh, next step, this is uh, just uh, for uh, for myself or just uh, we have uh, our team we we have. Next step, we have the uh, quality control about uh, shelf life predict prediction model of hotel based on the uh, gas sensors. This study just uh, we try to see the a uh, code code supply chain and also we try to control all the uh, changes different. Uh, for a different period, we have the different sensors. We can we can use sen electronic sensors to try to see and monitor the seafood change different uh, different time. Also, we try to make customer to make them safety and something else. Also, we have this. We we just we just make plan like this. We we clean air and uh, we make the sample here. Uh, we and uh, we got got a different index and uh, we. And uh, for this side, we try to control, and uh, we can we can make a uh, we can make a smart lab. And uh, if if this uh, changed, and uh, just uh, show it to customer, this quality is not can be it anymore. Please, just one minute. Okay, okay. And uh, this is the uh, last. Uh, we have the no novel hotel fresh indicator member based on the typical and and shinies this can be easily can be can be showed for a customer if you have made some change for the t thb or something like polity or something changed by the by our seafood so this is maybe next step we can make a cooperation of with uh, professor guidi or some professors worked on on italian side we can try to focus on this Okay, and uh, this is also you can see the the final final slide. This is our lab laboratory, and uh, also you can see this. We have the beautiful beautiful city. We have the beautiful beautiful people worked here. So, uh, if you have the if with future we have the chance, we can work together in Zosa. Thank you, Thank everyone. You Thank you, and uh, we. So fast. Uh, uh, next uh, presentation is uh, Professor Maurizio Maffei, University of Pisa.
uh, on metagenomic analysis and aquaculture implementation of the Marine Copper Podakasha Tunsa, a study plan for doctoral degree program. Please, Maurizio. Here I am. I'm going to share. Can you see my presentation now? Yes. yes. Okay. First of all, good afternoon to the Chinese colleagues and good morning for the other European colleagues. And thank you to the committee organization for inviting me. And uh, with pleasure, I will use the next 10 minutes for my presentation. My contribution to this uh, workshop is focused on the presentation of study plan for a doctoral degree program that will be applied in collaboration with the Zoo University, ISPRA, and the University of Pisa, where I apply my teaching and research activity. I am a researcher in the infectious disease and microbiology field. The program or the PhD program will be centered on the metagenomic analysis and the aquaculture implementation of the marine copepod Acartia tonsa a study plan and for this doctoral degree will be now explained. Briefly, as <clears throat> already introduced by their colleagues uh, and Isabella, uh, copepods uh, are widely uh, distributed crustacean uh, um, marine uh, um, subclasses, and uh, they are um, present with many species uh, uh, through the world, world ocean. Copepods are basic components of the marine food chain, and they are of great interest <coughs> of, and ecological importance, providing food for um, many species of fish. Let's go on. Okay. Uh, the high uh, nutritional value uh, and in respect to the other commercial live food, copepods are considered as promising uh, um, candidate for the feed of fish larvae. And uh, among copepods, Acartia tonsa, oh, this is one, uh, Acartia tonsa is uh, one of the wide uh, geographical distribution and present in uh, several studies um, investigating its physiology and ecology as well as microbiome and uh, and uh, um, for this region Acartia tonsa is uh, considered as a valuable model of study. Uh, Therefore, those kind of copepod uh, is, is um, known as a emerging uh, biological model and a source of important uh, uh, food for the aquaculture system and purposes. Uh, moreover, some uh, recent studies um, focus their interest on the uh, associated microbiome on uh, uh, eggs of uh, those kind of copepods, and uh, some study provide the isolation of some bacteria strains from these copepods, or better, from the eggs, uh, with high uh, probiotic probiotic activity and properties. Um, in particular, uh, some uh, um, culture bacteria, uh, mesoph mesophilic bacterial flora associated to Acartia tonsa copepod X uh, have been isolate, isolated and identified and uh, has been uh, uh, identified some uh, activities uh, that show strong antagonism uh, with, uh, again, uh, several um, fish, potential fish pathogens. And... Uh, oh, sorry. And uh, this point is, uh, of course, of great interest because can open an important field of research. Um, aquaculture is threatened by infectious disease, of course, we know, and uh, it is a major impediment for its development. And one, one, the, the infectious disease one are considered one of the most important and significant causes 
of economic losses. Uh, infectious diseases are caused by different uh, bacterial or viral pathogens, and in some cases they can be a, a risk for health, uh, um, public health also. Uh, generally, uh, there is uh, uh, infectious disease are um, uh, used uh, to, to fight with some uh, antibiotics, uh, and uh, we know that those uh, molecules have a, a negative effect on uh, environment and human health, and moreover, there are um, many uh, strict restriction to the use for uh, their um, their use in the and the uh, presence in the environment that uh, um, many many countries are even um, is not uh, uh, um, is are banned and uh, they are not uh, used. Um, so uh, bacterial in the as a probiotic activity are of course an interesting and important strategy and they can provide a natural protective and curative treatment based on their beneficial properties. Therefore, the use of antagonistic bacteria um, uh, limit the development of uh, viruses and uh, uh, and and other uh, um, and the other um, pathogens, and uh, uh, some uh, of these uh, uh, bacteria uh, have been shown to be a good candidate for um, uh, use for uh, contrast uh, those and uh, those pathogens. On this basis, uh, research interest is growing and uh, a PhD research program is proposed for deeply investigate the possible use and the benefit of Cartia tonsa culture in fish feeding. Some strains of Bacillus of the genus Bacillus uh, produce natural compounds displaying antagonistic activities against many bacterial and fungal pathogens and are often used as agents for the treatment and or prevention of different plant and animal infection. The uh, antimicrobial activities are, are um, linked to the production of some antibiotic peptides uh, derived from the lipopeptide family uh, and of uh, and Bacillus um, pumilus uh, strains are being reported and uh, um, and uh, considered as uh, um, the bacteria that can produce uh, antimicrobial antimicrobial peptides and uh, and um, can be uh, active against a wide range of microorganisms. So we plan to screening a microbiome associated with different de development stage of uh, Acacia tonsa, and uh, there's, those uh, copepods could be um, reared in different uh, feeding condition, and uh, also we could uh, we can consider to conduct a whole genome sequencing approach to be adopted to obtain taxonomical and functional information. Um, then uh, the a set of uh, pre-isolated and typed bacteria will be evaluated for the antimicrobial activity and the use of Arcartia tonsa or the pre-isolated bacteria strains will be evaluated on uh, some fish models as zebrafish of Daniel Rario and uh, um, effective results could be also verified on target species for determining the possible outcomes and growth performance and survival rates in the, those other um, commercial live uh, um, species. And, and in conclusion, we 
Copepus, we know that are used in aquaculture as uh, could be a natural and economical, equilibrated and safe food source for the growth of fish larvae. And this uh, use could be an important field uh, to implement. Moreover, through the microbiota, Copepus appears a natural way of probiotics administration for these fish larvae and could be a promising uh, um, field of research. I thank you for attention and I just uh, leave you with this uh, image of our square in Pisa that is called Piazza dei Miracoli and hope to see you some some of you in Pisa and collaborate with you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you Maurizio. Thank you Maurizio. Uh, uh, Introduce okay. Thank you. Next, next, it also Simona, Simona, right? Good morning, good morning to everyone, and thanks to, for having invited me to these uh, very interesting workshops. And uh, can you hear me? Because of the connection, is, uh, yeah, I think you can hear me. Can you confirm? <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Okay, this bit, uh... it is unstable. Uh, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. So <clears throat> uh, I'm working at the University of Pisa, and I'm here to, to summarize some results that have been obtained in the frame of collaboration between the Department of Biology of the University of Pisa and the Department of Civil and Industrial Engineering from the same university and the ISPRA, the Governor, we particularly just to the Isabella Fortino's group. And um, better than me, that I'm not I'm simply an environmental microbiologist, uh, uh, other speakers talked about uh, acasatons in very interesting details. Uh, so we are. Uh, I'm going to, to to show you some results that we obtained about uh, the the microbial uh, bacterial actually, and uh, mainly bacterial species that are associated to the zoosphere of this uh, photopod. Um, and uh, with particular interest to what, to what happened at the end of the the life cycle of the animal that is. Um, related to enzymatic activities that are involved in the depolymerization of the, actually of the, the, the body of the, of the, the copepod and so the depolymerization of uh, macromolecules, tissues, that is accompanied by the, uh, the increase in some enzymatic activities uh, of interest like carboxylester hydrolases uh, with specific interest to lipase, Titanases, uh, proteases, and whatever. And since the Acarsadonsa is a sort of microbial hotspot because of uh, uh, its uh, feeding strategy, filtering the water column and uh, transforming macromolecules and uh, producing a, a gradient of nutrients uh, around the body of the, of the, of the, of the animal. Um, it is actually capable to recruit microorganisms. And um, these microorganisms are actually the ones that are harboring uh, this uh, enzymatic activity. And this enzymatic activity, uh, if they are involved in the degradation of what obviously is repulsive and to biodegradation, the idea is that it might be involved also in the degradation of the other repulsive and uh, macromolecules that might be of anthropogenic uh, origin. Thus, we uh, were interested in, uh, in fishing in a way, uh, microbial specimen that could be uh, involved in the transformation and hopefully degradation of biopolymers. Biopolymers that are of interest in, uh, in uh, management of the marine environment because they can substitute petroplastic in many anthropogenic applications in, in, in this very in, important uh, ecological mix. So what we we try to 
to, to do uh, was uh, um, a characterization, both from taxonomical and functional point of view, of the microbial community associated to uh, Acacia tonsia, a culture of Acacia tonsia that is maintained since the last 10 years, I think, in the uh, ISPRA labs in, uh, in, uh, in Livorno. Oh, and uh, we adopted uh, two parallel approaches. One that is culture independent and is based on the mainly bacteria metabar coding and the predictive functional metagenomics, and a culture dependent one that was uh, focused on the isolation of microorganisms that were capable to use biopolymers as a sole carbon source. So, in a way, they were capable to transport and hopefully mineralize also the, the biopolymer. And in relation to biopolymers, we were mainly interested in the polybutylene succinate cobutylene adipate, or PDSA. <clears throat> that is a polyester that is synthesized by the fermentation of carbohydrates that derive from lignocellulosis matrices. So it fits very well in the, in the concept of sustainability. And, um, and the primary structure of this um, polyester, uh, uh, it is um, due to the, the formation of uh, carboxyl ester bonds of different monomers. And the polymeric chains deriving from, the, from, the, from this kind of uh, structure are organized uh, either in uh, parallel structures uh, that are very repulsive by degradation. Uh, because uh, uh, the um, carboxylic ester bonds are not exposed to the activity of carboxyl ester hydrolases, that one of, one of the enzymes that we mentioned before, uh, for which an increase during the, um, the development or the, the development of state uh, of, of the of, of the um, uh, odal stage after the death of the odals has been observed. Uh, and so we have uh, two kinds of organization, uh, one that is less accessible to hydrolysis activity, that is uh, the one of the crystalline region of the, the biopolymer. And then we have also a certain uh, different organization of these uh, polymeric chains, that is uh, coiled or supercoiled regions, where the carbon carboxyl acid bonds are more exposed to the hydrolysis activity. Uh, so it would be possible that microbial strains are, are capable to attack both these regions and so to degrade on and use the, the biopolymers as a sole carbon source for growth. So what we have done, we have adopted culture dependent approach with the uh, extraction of metagenomes from odors at different stages of developments, but also from uh, dead odals and that we now will call as carcasses. And we did a, a lot of uh, functional metagenomic profiling. And, uh, and then we adopted also culture dependent approaches on carcasses because of the observation that these enzymatic activity are increased uh, at the end of the life cycle of the carbohydrate. And our hypothesis was confirmed by the mm, predictive functional metagenomic profiling. Here you see that these, uh, this is the pipeline of analysis that uh, has been applied to NGS um, results of the metabarcoding of the bacterial um, population that is uh, populating the zoosphere of the acalcetonsia. And here you can see a taxonomical characterization of uh, the bacterial families that are capable to express uh, carboxyl esterhydrolysis activity that might be involved in the degradation of the of the zip biopolymer. And this is a quite complicated heat map that tells you that when you see blue color, you have an increase in the contribution of the enzymatic activity. And these are different experimental groups. And the one that is much more blue than the other is the one referred to the carcasses after 33 days after the death of the adult. While you see here that uh, you have blue, intense blue a color, that means that there is an increase in the activity that is less, that is present, but the, the contribution of the, the same bacterial population is lower when uh, in, the, in the other experimental groups where the carcasses uh, 
the adult uh, at the at, at exactly at the moment of uh, the death that was actually induced, and then after four days, and here you have the uh, enzymatic contribution of alive odors uh, um, when they form and after six days of incubation. So the hypothesis was confirmed, and uh, if we uh, go to result, the results with, mm, related to the culture-dependent approaches, uh, here you can see some example of our isolates. Actually, we were capable to isolate both bacteria and fungi that derive, derive from the carcasses of the acarsotonsa that were capable, when grown in minim minimal medium, where PBSA was a sole carbon sources, to degrade and to transform the biopolymers. For the fungi, the, this candidate, this fungal uh, candidate, uh, belongs to the Phasosporium species. You can see that after 92 days of incubation, we have nearly a complete uh, degradation of an intact granule of PBSA. And here you can see the rest of the metabolic activity of the fungi. That is also translated in numbers in these graphs where you see the loss in mass of the, bio, of the biopolymer with time of incubation. And we observed a smooth effect uh, or smoother effect of the bacterial, uh, of one of the bacterial isolates that, is, um, that belongs to the Vibrio species. And we, uh, we looked also at what happened down to the structure of the polymers. By in just one minute. Yes, okay. by influence but for me in, in total attenuated reflectance. Uh, and quickly, you see here the, the spectrum of the carbonylic group or the PBSA that is transformed in uh, the typical peaks of the amorphous or of the crystalline structure of the biopolymer. So you see that the cladospolyl species is capable to transform because the shift in the peak of the amorphous uh, moiety so the biopolymer and for, for in relation to bacteria is also capable to uh, transform the biopolymers and in this specific case we have a transformation of, of, of the crystalline moieties of the biopolymers because we have the shift of the, the peak typical of these uh, moieties of the biopolymers. Uh, in conclusion, uh, we would say that COVID, uh, I would say, but in, in this case, Acanthotonsa is a sort of nursery for microorganisms that are harboring and even expressing the activity of interest for the degradation of uh, by recalcitrant molecules like biopolymers that are going to substitute platoplastics in my environment. And of course, we have per, as a perspective. Uh, uh, well, we hope to be able to improve the cultural approach to recover more candidates and sequencing their genomes to to infer the, the, the regulatory and functional traits that are involved in these processes to design bio-based bio processes in modern environments to degrade um, biopolymers or anyway polymers that are uh, recalcitrant on the biodegradation. Last but not least, uh, try to see if these isolates might be effective also against petroplastics. And last but not least, again, thanks for your attention, and I would like to thank all the people that were involved in this uh, project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Simona. We are at the end of the second panel, and uh, thank you for, for, for your uh, um, presentation uh, that uh, regarded uh, the it focused on the, the importance uh, no, on uh, marine biodiversity uh, for applied sciences. So we uh, started with uh, uh, copepods that we described all the marine biodiversity from bacteria to fish. And uh, I, I actually, we have a little bit later, we, we have a discussion, but I left. Uh, to Alessandra Guidi to decide uh, if the discussion should be postponed at the end of the panel three. What do you think, Alessandra? Well, uh, we run a bit out of time, but if there are some uh, quick questions, maybe we can do it now, but just a few minutes and then we move to the last panel. Okay. Uh, there are questions. 
I don't see. No, nothing. So I, I think uh, we can go to panel three. Okay. Thank you, Isabella. Thank you, everybody, for the very interesting presentation. So let's go to the last panel on higher education. And I will uh, leave the floor uh, without losing any more time to Professor Francesco Marcellone, Vice Rector for the Internationalization of the University of Pisa. Of Pisa. Please, Francesco. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yeah. Sure. The presentation. Okay. Can you see the presentation? Yes. yes. Okay, I can start. Thank you. Thank you very much, just for inviting me and uh, in this workshop. Uh, and uh, it's a really pleasure to tell something about this collaboration uh, between the Howard University and the Duncan University. This is a, a very long collaboration uh, because uh, uh, we started uh, to work together uh, uh, 10 years ago when uh, a memorandum of understanding was signed, probably by Alessandra <laughs> herself. And uh, in this memorandum of understanding, we also signed an agreement for the PhD student supervision. Uh, but we started uh, actually this collaboration in 2014 uh, with the beginning of the double degree of marine biology. In uh, four years, uh, we started another double degree in uh, biosafety and food quality. And uh, uh, we just started with the Pisa Marine Graduate School uh, uh, with the approval uh, uh, of the Minister of Education in the People's Republic of China. I remember uh, uh, the defense of uh, this school uh, because uh, this uh, happened in the 2016. Uh, when I started in this role at the University of Pisa, and uh, we just uh, had uh, this defense together with Alessandra uh, in uh, Beijing, and it was a really an amazing uh, experience uh, from my side, also because it was the first time that I had this experience. And um, how is the organization of the Pisa Marine Graduate School? Uh, we talk that we have two really programs. Uh, uh, and in each program, we can enroll 30 Italian and 30 Chinese students every year. Uh, and uh, we know that uh, uh, this uh, is implemented uh, by using uh, our professional researcher who teach at the Zhejiang Yozan University. Um, in the last two years, uh, this was performed in distance learning uh, because, of course, we had the pandemics. Uh, uh, in any case, this was an experience, uh, and I think that uh, uh, we have just to discuss if this experience uh, was uh, really positive and uh, we can really apply also in the next years. Uh, in terms of our experience, uh, this was very interesting, uh, if you, I think also for our faculty members, uh, because of course, uh, this is an interesting experience. You have the possibility to have this uh, change uh, also in learning and teaching with uh, other universities. And uh, I'm uh, very, very uh, pleased to tell that uh, also the interest of uh, Italian students in uh, obtaining uh, these double degrees uh, uh, started really to increase. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we start to have really some application. Uh, and uh, this is obviously, it's very interesting also for us. Uh, we have just to remember that it's not so easy for Italian students uh, because we know that the Master of Science in Italy is two years, uh, the duration, and uh, in China it's three years, uh, so our students have to spend uh, some other months in uh, China just for obtaining this double degree. Some data in uh, marine biology. Uh, we started uh, um, to really enroll the students in 2017. Uh, we started with six students, uh, and uh, we can really appreciate that uh, we just have an increase uh, in number of students. Uh, in 2021, we have 27 students. Uh, and uh, for food processing safety, uh, we have 29 students uh, this year. Uh, so this means that uh, we are really 
uh, achieving the threshold that we established at the beginnings. As I told you, we start also to have some interest from Italian students, and this is very interesting for us. This actually is the situation we have at the moment, uh, but we have to start to think about uh, future direction, of course. Uh, and uh, I think that we should improve something uh, from the experience we had. In particular, uh, I think that we should have an higher integration of the China students so with the University of Pisa. In the agreement, we know that these students should really spend uh, uh, some weeks at the University of Pisa. We had the pandemics, of course, uh, we couldn't work so much in the last two years about these topics, uh, but I strongly believe that we should really restart uh, uh, with this uh, uh, presence of uh, the China students and the University of Pisa and just to really make an organization next year. We should have an higher integration between Italian and China's teachers. Uh, I think that we should really stimulate uh, this integration in terms of teaching, but not only in terms of teaching, but also in terms of research collaborations. Uh, we should really use uh, the China's teachers uh, to promote the double degrees at the University of Pisa. I think that should be very interesting, just to present uh, these double degrees from the China's point of view and to present to our students uh, just to boost them, to start uh, with the double degree uh, and just to increase the numbers. Uh, but I think that's we should work more about scientific collaboration. We strongly believe that high level of teaching is the result of a level of research. And in this particular case, uh, we should really have some common research. So we should really improve so much uh, the research collaboration in projects, just because this is the correct way to enforce the links between the University of Pisa and the Zazangozen University and between, of course, the uh, respective researchers. We started to talk also last year to uh, have the possibility to open other double degrees in uh, other areas of interest. Uh, of course, uh, this is a common interest. Uh, I think that we should also exploit uh, the experience uh, we had in the last two years. Pandemics was a big problem, we know is still a big problem, unfortunately, but obliged us to experiment new forms of teaching and learning. And I think that we should explore uh, distance learning, blended learning, uh, just to really uh, make more flexible the collaboration in terms of double degrees. I would like to finish um, this short presentation uh, uh, with this slide, uh, the last, last slide, uh, in the last months, the University of Pisa uh, became a member of an, a European university, it's denoted as Circle U. This means that the collaboration of the University of Pisa opened the possibility at the moment uh, just to open the doors uh, in uh, Europe. In particular, uh, in this alliance, we have nine universities, included at the University of Pisa, University of Oslo, Aarhus University, Humboldt University in Berlin, University of Louvain, King's College in London, Université uh, de Paris-Cité, University, uh, University of Vienna, University of Belgrade. Uh, and uh, just to give you some numbers, uh, uh, if you just put together all this university, we have approximately uh, 500,000 students. Uh, and this is a very uh, big number, uh, also considering the euro. So uh, I want just to close my presentation with these slides, uh, just to tell that uh, uh, this school uh, uh, is not only uh, a link between China and Italy, but now is a really link between China and the rest of Europe. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, this uh, uh, workshop. Uh, and I strongly believe that uh, this is a very good opportunity to make uh, this collaboration stronger and stronger. And thanks to Alessandra just for this organization. Thank you, Francesco. And uh, I do hope that we will soon return to see our mutual mobility because this is really a 
the great added value of uh, double degree, but also great added value also for bilateral research. However, uh, we have still the pandemic and we have to deal with it. So let's uh, go to the next speaker. That is Professor Zheng Zhang, Vice Rector for the Internationalization of the, of the Zhejiang Ocean University, strengthen strengthening extensive cooperation in the Joint Marine School. Please. Bear with one moment. So, yeah, we are, we are uploading our PowerPoint now. Yeah, we, we are uploading of our platform. You just need to share the screen. Open the presentation and, and share the screen. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, you know, we are uploading. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, respect uh, Professor Guili. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, Zhejiang Haiyang大学比萨海洋研究生学院呢，于二零一八年的九月由我国的教育部批准试炼，是个不具有法人资格的中外合作的办学机构。依托意大利比萨大学。与浙江海洋大学的海洋科学与食品科学与工程两个优势学科合作举办研究生层次的中外合作办学机构。This yeah. marine graduate school of Zhejiang Ocean University was established in September 2018 with the approval of the Ministry of Education. It's a senior foreign cooperation school without legal personality, relying on the advantages displays of the University of Pisa in Italy and the Georgian Ocean University, marine science and uh, food science and uh, engineering. The two universities jointly hold a senior foreign cooperative school Ruining Georgian Ocean University cooperates with the University of Pisa in Italy to hold the master's education project of marine biology. The project has been run for four years to cultivate a group of senior professionals with broad international vision, high English level, a family with international rules, able to carry out cross-culture exchanges and cooperation and participate in international com uh, competition. On the basis of cooperation projects, the two universities jointly organized a thin foreign cooperative school running at the grad, grad, um, graduate level. It's a marine grad, graduate school of Zhejiang Ocean University, which includes two majors of marine science and food science and engineering. So far, the college 
college has been running for three years. Uh, about student training, the first batch of uh, enrollment beginning in 2019 and the three uh, postgraduates has been enrolled by 2021. 20, uh, it's expected to train 122 high level teaching and research works with the international vision for the society with remarkable school running results. The school running has been widely con considered by the society and the high, highly uh, val value, valued by the local government. In 2021, the school won the a provisional guidance fund of Zhejiang High Level University for the for the first time, which will lay a solid foundation for the future development of the school. So uh, we will carry, uh, carry out the further cooperations. The uh, which includes uh, several items. The first item is, is about to establish the course group. The school will set a sino Italia course groups based on the courses with the intention of strengthening the digest and the absor absorption of Italia courses at the same time. Through the further guidance of Chinese teachers, it will improve the learning effect of stu students and make up for the uh, deficient of online courses. The next item is about to hold a normalization workshop. We hope we, hope we can organize a workshop for Sino Italian teachers once a year to strengthen bilateral cooperation and exchanges. The third item is to establish joint uh, doctoral training channels. Uh, we hope to select outstanding students from Pisa Marine School go to University of Pisa to study for the joint training doctor and improvement uh, the level of joint training of students. The fourth item uh, is to invite visiting professors. It's pro uh, proposed to employ uh, re relevant professors of University of Pisa as visiting professor, professors of Zhejiang Ocean University to further promote bilateral cooperation and exchanges. The fifth item is to, uh, is to get professional development. Uh, we hope to extend the existing cooperation and uh, hope to add uh, three more master's level double degree programs when conditions become uh, mature. Uh, uh, relying on the advantages displays of both sides, the college plan to expand the cooperation measures, which include uh, information engineering, civil engineering, and uh, mechanical engineering. Finally, we would like uh, Thank, uh, thank, thank for care of uh, Ambassador of Italia. The uh, Ambassador of Italia in Beijing has paid close attention to the school running situation and uh, gave great support. Thanks a lot. Based on the link role, role of uh, the Ambassador of Italia in Beijing, the joint school will strengthen scientific research cooperation with Italian University 
and scientific research institutes. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Sorry, Professor Kriti. Oh. Okay. You know, okay. Uh, our PowerPoint check couldn't couldn't work. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vice President, for this important speech and in particular for the important project you told us for the future and for the future of the collaboration. So let's now leave the floor to Professor Andrea Serra, the president of the Master Degree of Food Biosafety and Quality. Please, Andrea. Hi, hi, Alessandra. Can you hear me? Yes. Alessandra, can you, okay. Yes, can you yes, see I me? hear you. Can you see me? I see you. I see you. I don't know if you have to share a presentation. Yeah, it's a big pleasure for me to see you again. <laughs> I so, will be soon in Pisa. Okay. Uh, okay. Are you able to see my presentation, my my screen? Yeah, I see it. Okay. Yes. So. It's a very big pleasure for me to have this possibility. It's an honor for me to have um, a space to, to have a little talk about my uh, master degree course and, and uh, double degree course in food processing and safety specialty. And I would like to talk about my double degree, uh, my, my master degree course. The name is Food Quality and Biosafety is a particular course, in fact, is a interdepartmental master degree course. That This means that is a collaboration by the, the, the teachers belonging to the Department of Veterin Veterinary Science of Peace University and uh, my department, which is the uh, Department of Agri Agriculture, Food and Environment, and uh, uh, it's a pleasure for me, it's a big pleasure for me to let you know this is the, that uh, this year is the anniversary of my department. It, it is um, a very old department because it represented the first university institution of agricultural studies in the, in, in the world. And... Uh, uh, the course, uh, the biosafety and food quality prepares the students, gives students information, gives students skills about the profession of agronomist, food technologist, and biologist. Is a very, uh, uh, in my opinion, the, the food science is composed by three different uh, big um, uh, fields, but food production. I mean, uh, for instance, the the, the rear system of animal, the feeding system, and the the breeding, um, but also the production of vegetables, cereals, and so on. And uh, food management, I mean, the 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 management of the food in in, in terms of uh, food storing, food food processing, food uh, cooking, uh, both industrial and uh, uh, domestic uh, uh, management. And finally, food combination in the diet. In fact, in my opinion, uh, don't, don't exist uh, uh, bad food and uh, good food, but uh, food uh, bad, uh, bad and uh, good food combination. It exists a, a bad or a good diet. And the agronomist is the, the, the profession that, de that deals deal with the food production. The food technologies deal with uh, uh, food management. And finally, biologists deal with the uh, uh, food combination. This is um, so different, quite different pr profession because uh, the first two professions deal with food, food security and belonging to the Italian Ministry of Agriculture, while the, the last one uh, um, uh, deals, deal, deals main, mainly uh, with the food safety and belonging to the 
health ministry, health Italian ministry, and uh, the all um, the all um, uh, uh, in, in production is important in order to maintain the human homeostasis health and the food quality and biosafety sorry, give students all this skill and deals with all this topic. In fact, uh, the student can be graduated in two different uh, uh, classes, uh, LM7, Vegetal and Biotechnologies, uh, LM70, Food Technologies. And uh, honestly, the the course uh, in is a uh, in good health, <laughs> uh, as demonstrated by the increase of the number of the students during the years. And this is represented the number of, of Italian students. But after the uh, 2019, uh, um, thanks to the collaboration with the Zhenjiang University, the number of the student increase increase uh, uh, once again. And uh, finally, finally, I would like to uh, share with you uh, my experience about the double degree with, with um, uh, Zhenjiang University, and in particular in food processing and safety specialty. Uh, the history is that in the 2018, uh, the, my course is included in the uh, school with the course of, of biology the department of Peace University. And uh, thanks to the works of Alessandro Guidi, of course, uh, to uh, Francesco Marcelloni and uh, to uh, um, uh, Chinese friends, Professor Liu and Professor Wang Jingbao, and uh, uh, the, in the uh, 2019 start the lesson for the Chinese students first cycle, and uh, I can confirm the data show it by Francesco Marcelloni, and uh, I'm very happy because the, the the success of the of the course is demonstrated by the increase of the students and um, uh, in 2020 we approved an, an educational plan for Italian students and as um, uh, uh, said before by Francesco Marcelloni the main problem is the different of the lengthness of the uh, two years for Italian uh, uh, course and three years for Chinese um, uh, course, uh, but we did it. And so I I so confident that in the next future, also for Italian students, it will be possible to, to attend the lesson in China. And... Uh, in 2021, 10, 2022, we had uh, uh, the the first thesis defense uh, uh, relating to the the China student of first cycle. I would like to to do a uh, special thanks to to Chao, uh, which is attending these 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 seminar, and so uh, for is very precious help in managing the student and the, and the teaching. And uh, uh, I is um, uh, 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 a, a good surprise for me, the very high level of uh, Chinese students. This is the uh, average final score very high. Uh, and so I'm, uh, I'm so happy. And finally, the perspective, I hope the problem, the big problem of our collaboration is the pandemic. Uh, the pandemic mm, doesn't allow us to, to attend the lesson, to, to, 
to to have the lesson in China, to have uh, the the possibility to to have the possibility to 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 a collaboration, scientific collaboration with the, the Chinese uh, colleagues. And so in the next future, my willing is to make possible the access to the course for the Italian students and uh, uh, to have the lesson in China and to increase the scientific collaboration with China's colleagues. So that's all. That's all. Thanks a lot for your kind attention. And Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. I want to just add that even before the cooperation with Zhejiang Osha University, we had Chinese students in the course because I was a professor and I taught in the course and still teaching in the double degree, but I have been the supervisor of a Chinese student for the master degree. However, let's go now to the next speaker and I leave the floor to Professor Jiang Xin Wang as which is the Dean of the School of Marine Science and Technology of the Zhejiang Ocean University. Please, Professor Wang. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, and we see okay. your presentation. Okay, okay. good morning. Um, Alan Paul, the Ambassador of Imperial in Beijing and uh, Dr. Isabella. Hello, everyone. My name is Jason Wang, and I'm the Dean of School of Marine Science and Technology. My pleasure to report Shino Ikeri joined the education for postgraduate student here. At present, our Zhejiang Ocean University have a multi-dimensional cooperation with the Italian University for more than 10 years, which originated from the scientific research cooperation with the University of Naples Federico Lab in 2010. Side cooperation just uh, is better. <clears throat> then we reached the agreement with the University of Pisa in 2012 on course wise PhD. <clears throat> in 2013 and 14, we further reached the co cooperation agreement for the master program in ocean science. Bring biology special between University of Pisa and the Zhejiang Ocean University. <clears throat> In 2015, <clears throat> then the Sino Italy Joint Postgraduate Program of the Zhejiang Ocean University was initiated. Finally, it's take Established the Pisa Marine Graduate School of Zhejiang Ocean University in 2018. Next, I will introduce some current status of the Pisa Marine Graduate School in of Zhejiang Ocean University. The training program of marine biology degree in Pisa Graduate to eight school composed by 35 credit hours, including the degree public course, basic degree course, degree special course, optional course, and the <coughs> scientific research and the research article are necessary for the student in PISA graduation in which seven courses were taught by Italian teachers. By the way, allow me to appreciate the hard work of these Italian teachers here. For now, <clears throat> for the marine biology 
a total of 16, 136 students will graduate from the Sino Italian John, John Post Graduate Program since 2015 to 2018, and the total of 79 students will recruit and calculate the things. 2019 in the PISA Graduate School. PISA Graduate School students publish more than 100 articles and more than 10 patents. After graduate from the PISA Graduation School, at least two students, such as Xiao Guo Ying and Zhou Chao, Get pro PhD from other university, include, including Pisa University. And other students graduated from Pisa Graduate School are working well at different university, companies, and government departments. <clears throat> In addition to student trading cooperation, we have strengthened scientific and technological cooperation. And um, ZGOU, PISA University, and ISPRO applied cooperation for a international cooperation project from the National Natural Science Foundation of China. <coughs> now, research from the PISA Graduate School are working at the physiological, biochemical, and ecological properties of meteorites. <clears throat> Recently, we also successfully hosted the first international conference on muscle in Zhoushan, China, with the participation of research from both China and Italy. Okay, finally part. I will report next the depart development playing on undergraduate training. First, international summer course for our marine science and the biological science undergraduate undergraduation will be established in future. Second, short term international exchange wasting and credit replacement opportunity will be private for our undergraduations in future. Third, we will appreciate the opportunities for our undergraduates to applying master degree of the University of Pisa. Then I think next development playing <clears throat> planning on postgraduate training. The first development online international course, for example, fish ocean oceanography <clears throat> for the student from both ZGOU and Pisa University. Second, expanding the master degree to other subjects such as master degree of ecology. Third, establish a PhD program under the cooperation between ZJOU and the PISA University. <clears throat> and the next development playing on disciplinary construct is first scientific research co Cooperation should be expanded in the future between the ZGOU and the PISA University. Second, the Sino International Italian Joint Library should be established and apply for current cultivation. Third, establish an open access for the research plan, application from teacher of PISA University. That's the end of my present presentation. 
Thank you very much for listening and the series. They look forward to the proof of cooperation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your interesting presentation. Again, with a lot of very, very interesting and important project of cooperation. And now um, I ask if Professor Casini is already available. Yes, I'm here. I'm available. Okay, okay so uh, I leave the floor to Professor Giovanni Casini as a representative of the Marine Biology Master degree. Please, Giovanni. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, okay, I hope you can see the, the slide. Yes, uh, we see the slide and we hear you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so very, very short presentation of the double degree in marine biology in which I am teaching. Um, this is a, <coughs> okay, it will be a very simple description of the course. Um, first of all, a little bit of historical notes. In, uh, in 2014, <coughs> the first agreement uh, for this double degree was set between the University of Pisa and the Zhejiang Gaoshan University. While still in 2014, uh, this uh, approval, this agreement was approved by <coughs> the Ministry of Education of China as an international educational program. Then in 2015, <coughs> the agreement uh, was activated and in 2016, we started uh, with um, the teaching of uh, uh, this double degree at the Zhejiang Ocean University. And then, as you know, in May uh, 2017, there was the establishment of the Marine Graduate School with two specialties, the, the Marine Biology specialty and the Food Processing and Safety specialty. Um, some uh, characteristics of this uh, uh, agreement. The terms of cooperation was in total for 10 years, in, <clears throat> which included, uh, which would include eight consecutive intakes of students with one intake every academic year. And the objectives of this uh, agreement <clears throat> are mainly the ones that, I, that are summarized here, that is advanced the formation of advanced and internationalized professionals with, with high scientific quality. These uh, <coughs> figures should contribute to the current and future marine science and technology uh, with the high knowledge and mastery of practical skills. With their high level of English language, they should be um, should interpret uh, uh, at the best, cross-cultural cross communication and international collaboration. And they also <coughs> would be in a good position to participate and hopefully get uh, to participate to international competitions and hopefully get important uh, um, recognitions, <coughs> both in terms of uh, scientific uh, visibility and uh, uh, food, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Uh, I was giving a lecture about food, sorry, and uh, um, grant uh, uh, and grants. The intake and scale of this uh, master degree is up to 60 master students per year, with the duration of the specialty courses of three years, and in total, 180 students are <coughs> uh, will be um, uh, in the school. That is 33 year academic graduate students on marine biology specialty per, per year and other 30 for the other uh, specialty in food processing and safety. Um, regarding in uh, more specifically the marine biology, the, the double degree in marine biology, well, this um, double degree. In this double degree, at the end of the courses, the students will be awarded both a master's degree of science in marine biology by the Zhejiang Gaussian University and a master's degree in marine biology by the University of Pisa. The students from the University of Pisa uh, 
may also uh, obtain the double degree. In this case, they should spend one year at the Zhejiang Goshen University to study and prepare their research thesis. And then on the third year, they should submit to the University of Pisa a report of their activities. <clears throat> The total academic hours of all the courses in the Marine Biology Master's degree is 662 hours, and at least 35 credits are needed for graduation. Of these credits, 23 are due in degree specific, in specific courses, <coughs> nine credits uh, in non-degree courses that may be chosen uh, among uh, available uh, titles, uh, plus natural dialectic course, and uh, three credits in compulsory sci-tech activities. Then there is a written uh, dissertation in English that is uh, needed to, to, to get the, the degree. Um, in the marine biology specialty, teachers from the University of Pisa, of Pisa teach their courses in English at the Zijan Goshen University, and this helps happened until 2020, and in the last three years, this was not possible to the COVID pandemics, and the courses have, have been given online. The teachers from the University of Pisa also supervise the dissertation writing through email and or conference calls, and attend the dissertation oral defense. These are numbers, figures, that um, show the, um, the uh, the contribution of the uh, University of Pisa in the double degree, and especially uh, it is especially evident in the um, indication uh, in the courses <coughs> characterizing the, edu the educational plans. Seven out of ten core courses, that is 70% of, of, all, of the core courses of marine biology, are, are imported from the University of Pisa. While well, these other numbers refer to the contribution of the courses given by the University of Pisa on the total credits in the educational plan and in other um, features. In any case, you can see that <clears throat> at least one third, more than one third of the total effort is uh, contributed by the University of Pisa. And this is the organization, the educational plan, and the specific courses of the marine biology uh, specialty. And this is what I was uh, uh, indicating before, the basic and the professional courses <coughs> are the ones in which uh, uh, teachers from the University of Pisa are mostly involved. Uh, in addition to these degree courses, there are also other courses called non-degree courses from which students may choose optional courses to build up the degrees that are needed to complete the, um, the educational plan. These are compulsory science activity, sci-tech activities that include academic practical activities as well as scientific research and research articles. And there is the possibility also of remedial courses uh, about marine biology, ecology, or introduction to life science. <clears throat> As I said, among the degree courses, most of them are, give, are given by uh, teachers from the University of Pisa. Uh, and those in red, uh, indicated in red, are the courses. And here, uh, I put a very brief description of each of these courses, but I don't want to go into much detail. Um, just to show you that the very basic uh, uh, matters like biochemistry or, or physiology of marine animals are concerned with the, with, the, um, with adaptations that marine organisms from invertebrate to vertebrates are, um, have developed in order to, um, to adapt to a very specific, a very quite particular environment in which every uh, um, function of uh, at the biochemical or at the proper physiological point of view uh, need the specific adaptations. And then uh, we have uh, more professional courses that are uh, directed at giving uh, uh, students uh, expertise and knowledge about, for example, environmental sampling design, 
<clears throat> for uh, a correct um, acquisition of data from the uh, scientific material uh, and uh, courses that take in, into consideration global, global changes in marine biodiversity uh, to, in particular, this course is uh, designed to build fundamental ecological principles <clears throat> and to uh, allow students to uh, expand their understanding of physiological mechanisms regulating the response of plants and animals to climate changes. Then, also, again, we have marine phylogeography and fishery genetics, ecotoxicology, and public health for sustainable coastal and marine development. Uh, I don't want to, to go too, too long in too much detail. I just want to end up saying that uh, there are uh, students that have got the degree in these last five years. Uh, we, have, we had 10 uh, students grad graduating in 2018, 10 2019, etc. for a total of 42 students who have got their double degree in marine biology. And the ones standing on the back are the first 10 fortunate students who got the degree in 2018. And uh, this is all. I thank you for, uh, for your attention. And I hope you, I could give you some uh, interesting information about the organization of the course. Thank you again. Thank you, Professor Casini. Thank you very much for your presentation. And now let's go to the last presentation from Professor Bin Zhang, Vice Dean of the School of Food Science and Pharmaceutics. Please, Professor Zhang. Okay, thank you, Professor Guidi. Uh, because we have a bit of time, maybe I will give my presentation less than five minutes. Okay. So first one is about the brief introduction for our College of Food Science and Pharmacy. Our college was established as early as 1958. Now we have 73 faculty members. Among these members, we have 48 doctor degree teachers and 16 professors and 16 associate professors. We have two departments, including the food science and technology and the pharmacy. About the students, we have 350 master degree students, including food science and safety. Another one is pharmacy. About undergraduate degree students, we have 1,100 students, including food science and technology. The second one is food safety and food quality, and the last one is pharmacy. About food processing and safety, we have three research directions. The first one is for the processing and storage engineering. The second one is for the safety and logistics. The last one is extraction and application of natural products. Now we have 44 full-time teachers, including 10 professors, of which 95% are doctor degree. About the research funding, we have more than 200,000 yuan per year per person. Uh, this is about food processing and safety. This is two examples of the course schedule. This one is 2019 year, this is schedule. Another one is 2022. Uh, uh, for a seven, seven professor from PISA gave a like course for the master, the master students. This is a, is a network cross picture. And three about the enrollment and the graduation. Uh, 2019 year, we enrolled 20 students. And 2020 year, we enrolled 25 students. This number is different from the number from PISA because one of the students was not registered this that year. And 2021 and 2022 year, we also enrolled 30 students. Last week, we have finished a graduate defense meeting. This is the, the picture from China side and another picture from PISA side. Okay, the last one is the future perspective. The first one is about academic papers. We want to stress 
collaborations, we are core publications, you know. Core publication is very important and is very beneficial in terms of ranking for both scholars and both universities. The second one is about the funding. We want to two parties make great efforts for the international cooperation projects. The third one is about the laboratory. We want to uh, establish a joint laboratory for the master students from Chinese and Italy side to enhance the scientific research. The last one is work together. We hope to work together in Zhoshan or Pisa. We can exchange with scientists or with students. Uh, the final, we want to get a closer relationship between PISA and ZJOU. Okay, that's all. That's a short communication. <laughs> you know, we have a busy, very busy time. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, the presentation and for the, <laughs> the, the quick presentation, I would say. So, we have we are in time so we can also open the discussion if there is any question please uh, you are free to do that alessandra yes. you hear me? <clears throat> uh, let me just uh, to make some remarks about uh, yes please uh, Okay, and um, I would like to thank very much uh, uh, Professor Zhang, Professor Wang, and Professor Binzang for uh, uh, the speech, for the words. <clears throat> I think that we have really a, a common interest, and this is very clear. We would like just to enforce as much as possible uh, this relation between the two universities, uh, not only in terms of teaching, but uh, also in terms of research and collaboration. Uh, and uh, I think this is actually the work we should really perform in the next uh, months. We should work in this joint laboratory uh, that you are proposing uh, in uh, just uh, uh, analyze how we can open uh, really research collaborations. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, in terms also of uh, visiting professor and visiting students, uh, uh, also PhD students, of course. So I strongly believe that uh, we have this common interest uh, and we have to work together <clears throat> in this direction in the future. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Francesco. And I just add that uh, as science and technology at the ship, please exploit me because this is my role. My role is to strengthen the cooperation between Italy and China. And of course, I'm still a professor of the University of Pisa, so I have a soft spot on Pisa. <laughs> so. I would be uh, very happy to help uh, the Zhejiang Ocean University to, to, to reach the goal, the important goal that has set for, the, for itself, as uh, we have seen from the presentation of our Chinese colleague. So, of course, uh, and it's was... fundamental. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's not fundamental, but I can help. <laughs> And uh, yes, the important is that we resume the international mobility because this is a big obstacle to cooperation. Even if I've seen that uh, when the cooperation is strong, it moves further also if it is online, but it's not the same. We need to see each other, we need to discuss uh, in presence, and we need our student and our PhD student that I think are the most important bridging tool for research to to come in Italy, to come in China, or to go in Italy, because this is very important. Or, according to what I saw before, to go all around Europe, because the the University of Pisa is now even more international. And uh, yes, please, Isabella. Uh, give it, um, thank you uh, to all the participants, uh, and uh, I hope that uh, and I am sure that this is uh, only the first, but uh, who will be other uh, future workshop, bilateral workshop between uh, Italy and China, uh, also because uh, the long uh, collaboration. It's just has been evident uh, in these uh, uh, two partners 
from uh, the research point of view and uh, the higher education point of view. So I, I think that is, has been a strong job to organize uh, uh, remotely this workshop. I hope that next workshop will be in presence, I hope in Italy or in China. This is my hope. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you, Isabella. First of all, let me thank you for the great uh, effort you did in the organization of this bilateral meeting, which is the first meeting, and we uh, underline that is the first because we want to have a second, and we do hope that we'll be in present. But in general, I think that we, we already did, but with this workshop, maybe we laid down the foundation uh, for a place of a continuous uh, and uh, for a uh, permanent discussion and confrontation. So I think that the, the 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 sea science, the marine science, in this very moment uh, are even more important because are at the center of the agenda of our governments, both on the Italian and the Chinese government, because uh, there is a big part in the 1450-year uh, plan of the Chinese government. So I think we have to exploit the moment, we have to size the moment and strengthen our cooperation also in terms of research and in terms of uh, funds for research. And uh, so I, again, uh, we have to work together and we have to uh, strengthen even more this cooperation and prepare for when we will be able again to, to move and to see each other in person. So the, I don't know if there is anyone else that want to say something. I, 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 would, like to, I would like to say something, Professor please. Quidi. Yes. Uh, 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 the old friends, yeah, I, I, I think this is a really good, good, good opportunity for us to to think about the future. I, I, I believe the the, the the future scenario is 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 very prospective and will be successful. Uh, I uh, first I would like to say many thanks to Professor Grady. You you did a really good job. You have a good position now to 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 to, <laughs> to help all, all the partners to. To, to 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 I think to to make the the, the Italian and the China in in in, in, in science a, a, a great uh, platform uh, based on the previous uh, friendship and partnership uh, between our all, all these partners. I I, I believe the, the a, a good uh, win win scenario could be established based on the two wheels. One is the education, another one is the, is the research. So uh, we believe we should uh, uh, seek and uh, and grasp every opportunity, not only in China, but also in, in, in European uh, uh, fundings. Uh, and uh, uh, based on today's uh, presentation, I, I feel more confident because uh, uh, both partners we have we have we have really did a, a, a some uh, a good science and uh, uh, worked on the very similar uh, uh, object uh, like today's talk uh, from Professor Mazi and uh, Dr. Simonia. I I really uh, interested in their in, in their works. Um, so I I, I hope uh, the, the, this meeting is is really the the first one, and and we are always ready for your calling, and always ready for 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 our further uh, 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 collaborations. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Professor. And I want to add that uh, on this topic, in the next future, there will be a new call from e from Horizon Europe, and I think that could be a chance for you all yes. to participate because. Yes. China will be involved. Or recently signed the administrative agreement, so it, China is going is going to co-found the um, uh, European project in some specific area in the flagship project, and in particular on agricultural and food. So we you you could apply altogether to one of these projects. 
Yes, we are really interested. So if we could have some like uh, this kind of meeting for 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 the, for the research planning uh, uh, framework, yeah, it, it, we we will be always always ready for for the calling. I just uh, say that it has been really a pleasure and a privilege for me to to attend this meeting, but also to organize it, and uh, because uh, also to organize but to attend because the, the, the presentation has been really have been really interesting, they discuss something important and I hope the goal and the, the, the target will be achieved soon. So uh, thanks again for, for, for participating, thanks again for organizing and I hope to see you soon uh, in presence, I hope in present here in China or in, uh, in Italy. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> thank you again to everybody and uh, see you soon on the screen or in present. Bye-bye.